that's one race that I wasn't going to be intimidated. Oh, car run good today. It's a tough race. It's a track where the car has to handle good, but it also has to run good. We finally got the monkey off our back here. I don't know what to say. Woo! You can't hold a sound. This deserves a good old drink. I guess they said I was the winner. I'd like to see the picture. A fiery crash in turn one. Car got a serious vibration, started hopping. Joy has to stand up for himself at some point in time. His wife wears a fire suit and family tells him what to do, so it's probably not his fault. So much history at Pocono Raceway. It's the NASCAR Cup Series from Pocono. Explore the Pocono Mountains 350. Let's go to Pit Road, Dave. Yeah, Joey Logano is part of that history, right? One of the best sound bites ever. Hey, he start. He finished yesterday in the seventh position with a pretty good yellow and red Pennzoil uh, shell Ford. So today they've got uh, pretty much the same program. Paul Wolf, the crew chief, told me this morning they were very happy with their race car. It was that final restart, the only time they remember all day when the outside line didn't work. We'll see what they choose late in the race today, Kelly. Chase Elliott has a much better looking race car today than the one he ended with yesterday. There was a lot of damage to this nine car, excuse me, Jeff Gordon, especially here on the left rear quarterback, the whole rear end, even the nose was damaged. And that all happened before he hit the start finish line on lap one. In spite of that, they finished 12th, have a lot of confidence about this race car again today, Marty. Kelly Kyle Busch has just one wind sticker on the roof and he wants to change that this afternoon. In fact, a moment ago, he told me, quote, I'm tired of finishing second, and he finished second here yesterday, but he told me we were more in the ball game than we've been in a long time yesterday. Today, we tried to add grip to our car. These sunny, hot conditions, Rick, he said that will play into our hands this afternoon. Can Kyle Busch get back to victory lane? We'll find out in a moment. Yeah, Kyle Busch so strong yesterday. He was actually the second best Kyle in the field. Of course, Kyle Larson so strong yesterday, but crashing on the final lap of the final turn here at Pocono. Let's get the engines fired up. We go trackside for the command. And now to deliver those most famous words in motorsports. Please welcome our Grand Marshal, the CMO and Executive Vice President of the Pocono Mountains Visitors Bureau, Brian Bossett. Welcome race fans. We're so happy to have you back in the Pocono Mountains. Drivers, start your engines! Fire and start up, you ready? Fire it up. What a weekend it's already been, and now we get the final race of the weekend. It's race two for the Cup Series. Who gets to victory lane? NASCAR on NBCSN is brought to you by Credit One Bank, the official credit card of NASCAR. Visit GoCreditOne.com. And by Toyota. What makes Pocono so challenging? Oh, the most challenging part about the tricky triangle, you can't get your car perfect there. Well, that was a waste of a freaking day. Very unforgiving. Trouble! Trouble! It's out, it's out. Pocono turns its name as a tricky triangle. Big crash. Look out, guys. Just a challenge in every corner. This is a double header weekend. It's certainly going to be a test of man and machine here at Pocono Raceway. That's part of a double header weekend at Pocono. Two shots for a trophy. Junior completes the sweep. He wins at Pocono Raceway. Kurt Busch will win at the Pocono Raceway. Chris Busher is your winner. He'll score his first career win. Fisher Flag, 4-2, Good job, boys. Hell yeah. Great job, guys. Kevin Harvick wins at the Pocono Raceway. The sixth career win here at Pocono. Left front tires flat. Kyle Larson in the wall. Bowman's going to get by him. Unbelievable. Unpredictability, that is what we have seen already in 
the Pocono Mountains here at Pocono Raceway. Let's take a look at the starting grid and let's listen to the first 10 positions. Chris Busher, Prosper, Texas. Michael McDowell, Glendale, Arizona. Martin Truex Jr., Mayetta, New Jersey. Christopher Bell, Norman, Oklahoma. Eric Amarola, Tampa, Florida. Ricky Stenhouse Jr., Olive Branch, Mississippi. Bubba Wallace, Mobile, Alabama. Daniel Suarez, Monterrey, Mexico. Chase Elliott, Dawsonville, Georgia. Tyler Reddick, Corning, California. And again, because the field was inverted, the top 20 positions uh, are reversed from what was yesterday. That means you see Bowman and Bush down there in row 10. They finished first and second. Yeah, you're going to see a lot of to the rears, right? Freeze, Alfredo, uh, Carl Stuff, All Geyer. New face to the starting grid. He just got word about an hour ago he's going to be in this race replacing Justin Haley after that big hit in the Xfinity Series wreck, or excuse me, in the Xfinity Series race. You see Newman and Custer looking for a little better run than yesterday. Had a little bit of bad luck. All right, let's style up the guy who's up front. Jeff, get uh, Mr. Busher on the radio. Chris Busher, Jeff Burton, you got us? Yes, sir, I got you. Well, buddy, you starting on the pole today. Tell us what you guys are going to have to do to keep that car up front. Got to work hard. Uh, you know, I think we made some good adjustments from yesterday. We learned a lot. Felt like clean air was a big, big game changer yesterday as well. So we'll have that here to start. It's all a matter of making sure we take care of it. Make it uh, all the way to the end with it. Chris, what did you guys feel like you needed to be better at yesterday? And how did you make those changes to get better? Uh, trying to get a little bit of ride quality in it. Bumps seem to have gotten rougher here uh, than, than what we remember. Uh, so trying to get get the front end to stay on the track a little bit more. Uh, trying to get a little bit of interest security with it. You know, PJ1 has obviously been pretty dominant through everybody that, uh, every race that's been out here. So we'll be working to try and get through it a little bit better as well. Less brake, more throttle time. All right, Chris. We appreciate you letting us ride along. Have a good day, bud. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you, Chris Busher and his team. That Ford Performance Cam. We're going to get some great views from Chris Busher today. Should be interesting to see that vantage point from the front row. Get a few more stories before the green flag flies. Let's start with Kelly. We've got another Ford Performance camera. That one's on board the number 12 car of Ryan Blaney. Blaney certainly has some fond memories of Pocono Raceway. Picked up his first ever Cup Series win here back. 2017 and it was a historic one for Wood Brothers Racing at the time. Win number 99 for that team. Now he's here with Team Penske. A really solid day yesterday. Top five finish then. He'll start 16th today, Dave. Monster Energy providing some good looks from Kurt Busch's car this afternoon. Finishing sixth yesterday means that he has finished sixth, eighth, and sixth in his last three races. Coming on strong at the right time, question mark, perhaps yes, as he moves toward the playoffs. Kurt Busch starts 15th today with the inversion, Marty. Dave, some terrific views from the Xfinity on board with Kyle Larson. Of course, he'll drop to the back of the field in the backup car. So what is the story of this backup car? Well, it's the car that ran at Atlanta earlier this year. And if you remember that race, he led pretty much the entire race until the very end when Ryan Blaney was able to pass him. Kyle told me she wants to finish the job today, meaning this car needs to get the win that it deserves. I did chat with the team and I asked Cliff Daniels, do you go any more conservative? You know, there was some speculation. Maybe they were too low on left side air pressure as Larson drops back to the field or Larson was maybe driving too low on the racetrack. He said, no. He said, I went a little more conservative on our setup on the left front, but I want no limits for Kyle. He can go as low on the racetrack all day long as he wants to. We'll see if Kyle Larson come come from the back to the front and win at Pocono. Yeah, that's going to be what we're going to keep our eye on. We're also keeping our eye on the numbers of this place. Steve, take us to the race breakdown. Well, we talk about Pocono and the challenges of it, and it starts just with its shape. It's very unique. It's triangle. Three corners and three very different corners, two and a half miles in length. Turn one, the most banking at 14 degrees. And as you come out of turn one down into the tunnel turn, turn two, eight degrees. Then the final corner, only six degrees, a long, flat, sweeping corner that leads you to the longest straightaway in NASCAR. So important to keep your momentum going. This race, 140 laps, a little bit longer than yesterday's. 30 laps, stage one, 55 stage two, and a 55 lap final stage fuel window, somewhere 42 to 45 laps. I, I almost don't want to put fuel window up there because with these guys have become so good at saving fuel, it seems like they learn to stretch these tanks every race. 
How difficult is a doubleheader day, guys? I mean, this is a doubleheader weekend where you race yesterday, you think you learned all you need to learn about the track and your car, and then you come right back the next day. You feel it like it's an advantage? I think the, the tough part is trying to figure out how to make your car better and sitting down with your crew chief and figuring out whether, man, we had a little, you know, they did have a flat tire on Larson's car at the end of that race, but other guys throughout the race saw issues with the left front tires. They're getting aggressive on the air pressure. They're getting aggressive on the camber. Some teams maybe can step up closer to that line, get a little more aggressive. That'll absolutely put speed and grip in the front of those cars. So I'm sitting down with my crew chief saying, hey, what stone did we not turn over and where can we get more aggressive to get more speed out of this car? And physically for the driver, yesterday was a cool day relatively short race. I don't think that's an issue. I think an easy recovery to get back in these cars today. Well, we saw the highlights really all weekend from Pocono and some of the big hits that could be taken here in a big accident in the Xfinity Series race. Justin Haley here in the 11 as he comes across. Look at this hit. A huge hit with the right side. He got out and laid down. We talked to him out of the infield care center. Said he was just knocked the wind out of him and was beat up. He was supposed to be in the 77. You see him laid down right here. Decision was made at Spire Motorsports to put Justin Allgaier in the car. So talk about a doubleheader weekend. Justin's having a doubleheader day. Just got out of the Xfinity Series race. He'll fill in for Justin Haley today. And let's listen in to the 77 radio. Let me know if you need more. Let me know if you need less. You do whatever you do. Um, I don't think you can hurt my feelings any. Listen, I've been doing this a long time. I know that nine times out of ten, I'm the weak link. So if you see anything, you just let me know. And we'll have some fun. Support buddy. Pass some cars. It'll be fun. So, I mean, my big question, I, I'll pose it to you two drivers, man. You couldn't ask for more drastic combinations, right? From high power, low downforce to low power, high downforce. It's going to drive totally different. I think that's why you guys went with a veteran in Justin Alcar. He's kind of been all through this sport for many, many years. And a guy that I believe you can trust to put behind the wheel of that car. Keith Barnwell, the yeah. spotter. Keith Barnwell, a very experienced spotter. So, somebody has been there, done that. Back on their feet, the fans. Looking forward to another great race. We've already seen two. Looking for the trifecta. Up front, Chris Busher, Michael McDowell make up row one. We're back underway. Busher, a great start, able to get out in front of Michael McDowell. McDowell, the Daytona 500 winner from earlier this year, locked himself into the playoffs. Ten car of Almirola down there on the inside, losing positions as those guys are pushing and trying to draft past him on the outside lane. They had the momentum off of the tunnel turn on the short shoot into turn three. The PJ1 up at that second groove gives that outside line that grip and confidence to be out there. Jeff, you and I have had this conversation. The 10 is one of those teams that talked about starting behind each and every week has been a problem the way the qualifying worked. They qualified well in Nashville, had that into a good run. You brought up which one of these teams, because the invert can take advantage of the stack position and keep it. Well, I thought the nine car, Chase Elliott, that's who I talked about. But look how many spots he's already lost at the start of this race. He's already back to 12th place. You know, he was, and now he's racing William Byron. He's racing those guys that were at the front of the pack yesterday. Not having a good start is going to make his fight to the front even that much harder. He had the damage to the car yesterday. He slots in right behind Brad Kozlowski, and we wondered if the damage in that left rear quarter panel was hurting the performance of that car, but they just did not have the speed even on the straightaway or the corner. The handle wasn't there compared to his teammates who had great speed. So interesting to watch this nine car today. Saligano get out of line trying to take a position there. Currently running in the ninth spot. A little bit of action back there in the back. Looks like somebody might have gotten into the Maybe gotten in the wall there, yeah. 38 car is up. Oh, he's back into the wall, so problems for Anthony Alfredo early. Over there. Over there. Is out. Right. Had a rough day yesterday. Got into the wall off turn three in an accident. I think with I blew a right front in the tunnel. Oof. Oh, that will hurt. Finished 26 yesterday. He was running 25th just now. That's really early in a run to blow a tire. We'll see what happens. Oh, here's the car. It's late already. I think he's already having his issue. Yeah, up out of the groove pretty far around the corner and into the fence. Not as hard as it could have been. You blow a right front tire, typically that's going to be a really violent impact. Lucky for him, it does hit the wall and it's going to ruin his day, but 
He can walk away from that one. And to your point, Jeff, so early, just I'm gonna go with the assumption, just run a piece of debris. I mean, it's a huge facility, right? It's unfortunate, but you never know. Something came off another car. Roll over this tire, and this early into the well, this is a race, I can't imagine we're going to see many of the leaders pit. Yeah, this is the team that had to go to a backup car, and you wonder too when you pull that car out. You know, this, they had the crash yesterday, and so what? What about this car might have failed that tire, right? You know what, Junior? That's a great point, right? You have sway bar arm down there. You have other suspension. If perhaps is there something uh, underneath the hood or around that maybe hurt that first tire? We don't know. But you mentioned yesterday. Here you go. Here's a look at it. It looks the same, but it's a different vehicle, and it's right here. A wreck between the 38 and the 7. Coyle Joy just kind of comes up. The 38's out there, and the end damage to both cars forced both teams to go to backups. You know, this double header is a great thing. It's fun to do, but if you wreck two cars on the same weekend, that's a lot of stuff to get fixed for the upcoming weeks. So that crew, once again, going to work on the 38. So unfortunate for Anthony Alfredo early in this one. You can go inside the headset with access to NASCAR scanner for only $2.99 per month. Listen in on that pitch strategy or spotter communication and the crew chief calls even. Visit NASCAR.com slash scanner to start your subscription today. As our aerial coverage brought to you by Geico as we look down on this packed racetrack, this packed facility just outside of the Racetrack as well as inside the most camping spots they have ever had filled here at Pocono. A great sight. Marty. Well, Rick, it's hard not to notice the fans lately sold out at Nashville last week. You mentioned the infield sold out at Pocono. The stands packed. All of that caught Brad Kozlowski's eye. It's a lot of people out there. It looks good. Third, big crowd. And I'm sure Brad would love to celebrate with the crowd here at Pocono this weekend after all and make it a Team Penske sweep. Austin Cindric won the Xfinity race earlier today, you know, and you get to do the interview at the start finish line and celebrate with all these great Pocono fans who bring it home, Rick. There's not a bad seat in the house here. You, you bring your camper, you're sitting on top of that. You can stay, sit in the grandstands. I was out walking the racetrack this morning and talking to some of the guys that work here and they said they had to open up traditional parking lots for camping because they had such a demand uh, for for the campers and they've never had more campers here at any other race that's so hard to believe because think back to how many people were packing into these places in the early 2000s uh, and, and we've set a new record today it's great fans enjoying a beautiful day here in the Pocono Mountains as we get ready for the restart there's still 25 it'll be 24 laps to go in stage one Chris Buescher and Michael McDowell were one and two. And it was Christopher Bell, Martin Truex Jr., Ricky Stenhouse Jr. So Martin Truex Jr., I think the name that jumps out at me here in the top five, we haven't seen a lot of great finishes out of him, but can he stay up front here? Didn't have the speed. He had the track position at points yesterday, but didn't have the speed or the pace handling the car to stay there. So I was interested to see if they made the big changes they needed to make it overnight. He now has the track position. And this would be a race that you think Martin would be able to run well in. So we'll see if they've improved that race car. Look at those cars going through the bumps in a tunnel, how rough it is. That shows you how rough this racetrack is and why that corner is so difficult. Kelly, you got something on the 19. Yeah, James Small, the crew chief, telling me they really struggled through turn one yesterday, said those bumps have now gotten worse than the turn two bumps, which is different from last year. And he told me what really killed him was taking two tires late in the race. He said after that, we were just terrible. We had an average race car until then, took two tires, and the handling just completely went away from the 19 team. Let's keep our eye on Martin Truex Jr. and that team, see if he is able to hold that track position. But it's Busher up front with McDowell on his inside as we get ready to go into the Geico restart zone. Busher gets a little bit away. They're more organized on that inside line. And there's good pushing down there. Now both lines got some pushing. See the car is getting out of shape. Michael McDowell into the lead. Busher having trouble. Busher way up the track. Lost positions. Christopher Bell able to take advantage of those issues, and he moves up to third. Mike McDowell 
leaving him down long pond straight into the tunnel turn. What a season it's already been for Michael McDowell after winning the Daytona 500, locking himself into the playoffs. He's continued to put up good finishes week after week. I think that's the key, right? The Daytona 500, we always see this team run out front at the Super Speedways, but they have taken a major step at all of the other racetracks, um, trying to move that win into some momentum into the playoffs. They know they're going to be a part of the playoff field to try to be more competitive when they get there. And when we talk about Chris Buescher's win in 2016, this was the team he was driving for when he got that win. So he's had success at this racetrack. We Kelly. talked about the 19 right there. Mark Truck Jr. tagging along right behind. Kelly. Yeah, getting back to Michael McDowell in that 34, talking to Drew Blickensdorf for their crew chief. They had a lot of confidence. He told me I felt like yesterday in two of the turns we had a top 10 car, but it was turn one where we were terrible. So he said we've got to be better there. Already early in this race, Michael McDowell saying the car feels much better than yesterday. A little bit loose, but much improved even from performance yesterday. Down right now trying to hold off Martin Truex Jr. who was right on his back bumper. We saw an incredible battle yesterday. Larson was trying to get by Alex Bowman. It took almost 12 laps for him to be able to make that pass for the lead once he got by him. Then obviously things changed. But are we going to see the same thing out of these guys that are running up front and these guys running for third or the three wide battle right here? And three forwards, three wide right there. Harvick with a big wiggle. Truex with a good run off turn one, really got off the corner really well. Did you see McDowell kind of moved his line and able to use the beach ball effect there, get pushed away from that 19. That's what McMahon, McDowell's looking in the mirror and going, all right, where are you going? Because I'm going there. I'm going to stay in front of you. If you pull over, I pull over. If you go high, low, I'm going to just go wherever you're at and try to either take your line away, take your air away with this big rear spoiler, or I'm going to use that beach ball, that pushing effect that they have in the draft off the nose of that 19 car and stay out front. That time, Truex ran a much higher line in turn three. See how much helps him down this front straight. Big momentum on the front straight. Not enough to overtake him, but certainly gain position by doing it. A little bit higher line here for Martin Truex Jr. Same thing. Watch this momentum that Truex gets off the of turn one. He doesn't have a run. He gets momentum and just kind of eases up to the back of that 34 and then shoves the 34 away. You mentioned the big spoiler in the draft. What I love about this aerodynamic package that NASCAR has in these cars is just this. The guy in second and third has enough of an advantage down the straightaway to kind of keep in touch with the leader, right? You don't shut the air off and drive away. I really believe it's this, once they get off the corner, this straight line speed from the 19 and the 20 that allows them to pull back up close to the rear bumper of the 34. Dave. Bumped into Christopher Bell in the garage this morning, running third there in the black and red Toyota, number 20. He was very confident about today. He said, I love this place. Truck win here, top fives in Xfinity and Cup. And he felt like yesterday's uh, the car was pretty strong. Didn't finish where he wanted to, but he was confident coming in. With this track position, he thought he could get something done today. So far, it looks good. Christopher Bell, the second year full-time with the Cup Series, 26-year-old out of Norman, Oklahoma. Already a win this year at Daytona, the road course there. Let's listen in on Alex Bowman's radio. A big vibration, uh, brake-related. I don't know what it is. I have some pedal, not much. Shakes the car really bad on the pedal. All right, so let's talk about what these teams were able to do and not able to do overnight. You had to run the same engine, same transmission, same rear gear, same brake calipers. So you could put brand new rotors on it, brand new pads on it, but it had to be the same braking system. We'll have to monitor this vibration to see if it gets worse, gets better. You don't use a lot of brake here anymore uh, with, this, with this rules package here, just a little bit into turn one. That's terrifying at this place to have any kind of brake shake issue. We see it many, many times getting down into turn one, the failures and what that can do to a race car and a driver. Oh, man, 23. Bubba Wallace up the track a bit there. How about these teams overnight? Not only are they work on their car, but someone changed the paint schemes on us. I got a 
you know, you, you run a whole race at 23 is one of them has some new colors on the car today. It's interesting. They come here and they they put the the wrap they're going to race today on first, then the next wrap for the Saturday race, and then they just pull off that one. Yeah, the 19. You know, Truex also changed colors overnight. And guys, most everybody I saw in the garage area today was working on their race car. Whether it was a backup car, or whether it was a car they raced yesterday, as you see Truex looking low now, the way that they push each other, the front bumpers needed repair, the rear bumpers needed repair, and everybody was making something look a little different to pass tech this morning after yesterday's rough race. McDowell's having a hard time holding back the 19 car and the duo of Gibbs cars right here behind him, but they're you know, they're putting good distance on the rest of the field. He isn't really holding up anyone else. And behind those behind those first six cars, look who's worked himself up the field. Kyle Busch, 12 positions since the start of this race, now running in seventh position. He's gotten in front of all those guys. Fast yesterday, fast again today. Marty. Jeff, plus nine since the restart for Kyle Busch. Yesterday, we heard him, heard him singing the praises of his car. Well, how is it today? Listen to the radio. But when I got down out of the turn, it gripped. It ripped. It, uh, it stayed pretty good. No bounce. So, feels like everything's right. Just traffic, man. Ripped and ripped. Steve, that's a pretty good one as Martin Truex Jr. goes for the lead here. I should have heard gripped and ripped too many times. Yesterday it was good, good, good. Today it's gripped and ripped. So that's an impressive run. You see the 34 gets passed by the 19. Now he's under attack by Christopher Bell. I believe he's got to give up the second position here in turn three. Martin Truex Jr. that's out front now at Pocono. Christopher Bell has moved up to second. McDowell back to third. Three different drivers have been up front today. McDowell has led seven laps, Busher six, and Martin Truex Jr. has led four. We look at our Toyota driver update right now. Four Toyotas running in the top ten. 
Martin Truex Jr. first, Christopher Bell second. Kyle Busch has moved all the way up to seventh. And Bubba Wallace currently running in the eighth spot. We see Denny Hamlin back there in 20th. For more updates, we'll go to Kelly. Eric Almirola now running in the third position. He finished 16th yesterday, and one of the things that plagued this team yesterday is they just felt like they were down on power. Mike Bugaravich, the crew chief, told me they went through all the components and systems overnight, the engine, the exhaust. They didn't find anything inherently wrong. Already today, Eric saying that the motor feels much better, and it seems to show, as I said, he's worked his way into the top three, and right now, he says his car is good on entry everywhere except for one, and he's tied on exit, Marty. Kelly Brad Kozlowski up into the top five. He told me yesterday's 10th place finish was the best we have been all summer. Obviously, a lot of speculation about Brad's future as he tries to get the fourth position for Michael McDowell. I asked Jeremy Bowen, you see on the right side of your screen, about all of that and if it's a distraction to the race team and if he'll stay at Team Penske or not. He said, you know what? We talked about that about two months ago, and we said, listen, we're all professional. We're all grown men here. You do what you need to do, but don't let it distract from what we're trying to do on the racetrack. As long as you do that, we'll be fine, Dave. Looking at Ricky Stenhouse Jr. now, just lost his position to the hard-charging Kyle Busch. Started six, had stayed there most of the race with a very loose race car, and now getting challenged by Bubba Wallace in that black 23. Looks like Stenhouse is going to lose that spot, too. He felt like his starting position on the outside line was better today. Didn't lose three or four start spots at the start. But right now, the car is not easy to control. And you can see Ryan Blaney is going to push his buddy Bubba through. And a handful for Bubba. We saw him wiggle a little bit as Ryan Blaney has been aggressive with pushing here at Pocono. Yeah, he had such a big run. I think anyone else he'd have pulled out and went three wide around him and maybe cleared him into one, but decided to push Bubba. And now he's going to try to take that spot back from Bubba down into the tunnel turn. And Bubba's going to fall right back here in line behind him, both of them going around Stenhouse in this lap. Hey, Bubba's like, hey, you're going to push me off? Why not fight you? Get into yeah. the tunnel turn. So Blaney up to seventh. Bubba Wallace holding on to that eighth spot. McDowell has dropped back to sixth now. And Kyle Busch up to fifth. Well, that's the name, Kyle Busch. I mean, you look at Bowman, 21st. He started 20th. You could have to consider him a favorite. Larson started the back, but only made it up to 22nd so far. Kyle Busch started just inside the top 20 and has gained 11 positions, most of them on the two restarts. I'm going to give him credit. Those la first lap after both restarts, the man was making some moves. But he doesn't stall out. While it takes a lot longer, he continues to inch forward. I mean, here we are inside the top five with still 10 to go in stage one. What does it do to this race, Steve, with no comp yellow versus yesterday's race? We had that comp yellow at lap 12. How does that change the strategy for the crew chiefs on this first stage? So two curveballs, no comp yellow and 10 laps further. And, you know, 10 laps, 25 miles doesn't seem like much, but that's, that's a lot of mileage when you're working on fuel strategy. So I think the guys that did it on only two stops yesterday, that gets to be a pretty far stretch today with those added 10 laps. And with the comp yellow, it's just harder to predict. You know, we have it, We saw a really, really early yellow that didn't really make a difference on the strategy. Here we see the 2 and the 18 nose to tail into turn 1. The 18 is going to look underneath Brad. I really think the decision's got to come right here towards the end of this stage. Will they run all the way to lap 30, or will somebody pit at lap 27 or 28, get their fuel and tires ripped before pit road closes? We'll see who pulls that sort of strategy. Everybody continuing to chase after Martin Truex Jr. as we go NASCAR nonstop.
Download the official app of NASCAR, and you can follow the action with free live scoring, in-car cameras, radio broadcast, upgrade to premium for full access to driver audio channels. Search NASCAR in your app store to download and start a free trial today. On board with the Ford Performance Team, Ryan Blaine. You get take a little look right here. We're talking about drivers doing more than driving. Look at this area right here. So that is basically a valve that opens and closes the right side NACADUC. Blaney right there, you see the tube closed. It's going down straight away. He's going to reach over, turn that thing open, change the downforce bounce a little bit, probably change the drag. Down to the corner he goes. We talk about how long the straightaways are here. Well, you know, crew chiefs, if you're not shifted anymore, Jeff, you surely should have time right here to, I mean, that's a big knack of duck right there. I mean, look at that thing. That is a lot of air going in there. So, so the, so the, okay, yeah, I want to hear about the drawing. That's a great drawing, drawing Steve. <laughs> well, but I know, listen, but so what, it's what's, early. It's what's early. the reason? The reason is you're trying to reduce the drag down the straightaway. That right. valve, you can put that valve in a position that reduces the drag, makes the car go down the straightaway quicker. Then when you get to the corner, you change that position, and now it puts down force and drag in the car, makes it drive better. Yeah, and he may actually leave it closed in one corner if it changes the balance of the car to your point, Jeff, right? Drag, and it might maybe make the turn versus one way or the other. So we'll see. And as we talk about Blaney right here, the 11 to Denny Hamlin turns left. As we talk about four to go in the stage, I don't know if this is planned. It's a little earlier than expected to be on pit road, but Blaney's over here doing the, there he is, still working the valve here. He just needs a little help to tell a turn. That's it. That's the only place he has it open, right? Yeah, he left it closed all the way down the first straightaway. And maybe he's experimenting. You know, maybe he's trying to learn if it helps or not. That's some pretty cool stuff. Better than my drawing. I mean, what the shadow was so good. We saw the 11 circle. come on there. What's the diameter of that little hole that's coming out of there? How much change is that really making, him opening and closing that? I mean, a lot. Three-inch carbon duct okay. going 160 miles an hour. I mean, it's a lot of air moving through there. Dave. Mental note, first two cars to take advantage before the stage end. Joe Gibbs racing Toyotas, and the 18 comes in as well. Christopher Bell said the car is pretty good. Uh, it goes a little bit free in one and two. They'll make adjustments for that, Marty. Yeah, three of the Joe Gibbs racing Toyotas coming down pit road, including Kyle Busch, the one leading the race. Martin Truex Jr., he stays out. Kyle saying it feels like the right rear is almost working a little too well, and he wants the left front to work a little harder. A wet adjustment that he's three numbers tighter today than he was yesterday, Kelly. You can see there Chase Elliott just finishing his pit stop. He said he started off as just a tick free, but thought he had better security to start this race than yesterday. Still, he wasn't able to make any progress, really, during those opening laps. Race leader Martin Truex Jr. has gone by the start-finish line. That means with under two to go, the pit road is closed. So no Base. more, yeah, no, no more strategy moves prior to the end of this stage. No, but right now, Truex is looking out front. He goes, man, if I could lap Chase Elliott, that would be good. That's one guy I could try to pin a lap down. Now he would probably get the wave around, but that's going to hurt his strategy right here. He's just out in front of him. Truex stays on the racetrack, so that's a pure decision by the crew chief to say, you know what? We're going to go for the stage win, go for the stage points. We find that more valuable. Marty. Hey, see, we saw Kyle Larson have a terrific first couple of laps and then kind of just sat there in traffic. Now, through all these pit stops, he is up to the 17th position. Why? Well, they have a little bit of nose damage. On the restart earlier, he made some contact with Denny, Denny Hamlin. Cliff Daniels said a moment ago, yep, we talked some, took some pictures of the nose. We can see it's a little more damaged than we thought. So Kyle Larson sledding up through the field has been a little more difficult than they thought. So Byron is the first car lap down. You're talking about messing up somebody's strategy. That's the guy in that, that's in that position behind the leader. And there he is trying his hardest to catch that 19 car and unlap himself before we get back here to the strike and finish this stage. He's just behind the leader as well. So what, as much as Trex wants to get in front of the nine, Byron knows. Now, like, like I mentioned, he will get the free pass, but that has put you at the tail end. It's while you get your lap back, it's still a big disadvantage. Look at him fight down into this corner, trying to gain as much as he can. A lot of speed. Will well, he, he try to? A ton. Oh, Look man. at him unlap himself. Oh, what man. a move! I cannot believe he even had a chance to get there. And he did it. Well, Martin Trucks Jr. won the stage, but William Byron valiantly was able to unlap himself. You know what uh, William Byron did right there? He gave my fantasy team life. <laughs> William Byron is on it, and I needed him to be on the lead lap. Man. Wow. I didn't think he was going to get there. That was impressive. Fourth stage win.
for Martin Shrex Jr. Another playoff point for the driver of the 19. Friday, Alec Baldwin is back in DreamWorks Animation's The Boss Baby Family Business. And this time he's got company with Amy Sedaris as the new Boss Baby in town. Catch The Boss Baby Family Business in theaters and streaming on Peacock this Friday. It's NASCAR Cup Series Explore the Pocono Mountains 350 on NBCSN. Mark Trucks Jr. won stage one, but I think a lot of the eyes around the track are looking at the nose of the five car right now. Yeah, we heard a little bit of damage on the radio conversation between Kyle Larson and his crew chief, and we zoomed in on the nose. And if you look right here, I'm going to give this another shot. Y'all can laugh at me, but right around there, right up around the Chevy symbol, oh, Junior, Junior just looked over at me. That was awful. All right. <laughs> hey, the circle was better. Okay. Okay. The circle was better. The placement. Well, the no that's, it, that's it. Next week you the get the circle was computer but generated. When he tried to draw a circle, it wasn't even close. The upper nose we're moving this forward. The upper nose is really smashed in. The hood smashed in. The concern for me, Dale, is not as much the shape, but if the actual nose has broken in one of those seams, when you get going 150 miles an hour, that is going to let air under the hood. That kills aero performance. So it's not as much the shape as it is holes or punctures. And make a note, next week when you watch Road America, any bad dra drawing will be the driver's booth because oh. I'm done with the telestrator. <laughs> the, the, also, the other thing it does is we talk about track position, how important it is. We talked about could Kyle Larson drive up into the top 10 before stage one? Obviously didn't do that. Now they got to stop, spend time on pit road. Now they got more cars to pass and keep putting themselves in the back of the pack, and it's going to be eventually, it's going to be too, could be too much to overcome, Marty. And Jeff, you got to wonder if it's kind of knocked the splitter down a little bit as well. Kyle Larson saying he does uh, feel this on the splitter much more, and they have everything here on pit road to fix it from a baseball bat to a hammer, to some sheet metal, to some bare bond, and the rivets as well. So they are ready to fix this when Kyle Larson comes down pit road, and that answers the question of why he didn't make his way through the field very quickly. The contact, by the way, was with Denny Hamlin on that restart. Let's take a look at that restart. It's on board of Kyle's car. Oh, getting down into turn one, just a big checkup. And uh, that's late. I thought it happened back here around the flag stand, but that's getting down into turn one, a lot of checkup, chain reaction accident. And those that didn't come to pit road earlier are now making their way onto pit road, and they head towards Kelly. That includes the 10 car of Eric Almirola. He said his car built too tight too quickly. He needs better rotation through all three turns. There's going to be an air pressure adjustment for Goodyear Tire Sunoco Field, perhaps a track bar adjustment as well for the leader, Martin Truex Jr. He said coming off turns one, three, and over the bumps, he was just building too tight air pressure adjustment for tires, Marty. Kelly, the Team Penske car is staying out with Brad Kozlowski and Ryan Blaney. Meanwhile, Kyle Larson has made his way to the pit stall, and yeah, Cliff Daniels getting a up-close look at this now, and you can see the damage where it's really pushed in right on that bow tie on the very front of the car. Steve, I don't know how you fix it when it's kind of concave like that. I do not think the splitter is knocked down any further. That was their concern, but Cliff Daniels was very clear. Let's take all the time we need. These long pace laps certainly help with this repair. That is just a great shot. So there you go. How do you fix it? We're going to go behind the nose. Just like that. We're going to pop it out. I don't know if it's going to hold, though. Man, this is a tough thing to do. I don't think you could fix the shape, Rick. I think it's just patched the holes at this point. But, uh, you know, still a long way to go here at Pokemon. 107 laps to see if the five can make repairs. I know the 4th of July weekend is coming up next weekend, but Jack, what holiday are you guys celebrating down there in the infield? Hey, take a good guess when you look down here, Rick. I'm down here with 14 friends, all met in New York City. They said every year for the past decade they've come to this race, always a theme, and this year they said coming back to the racetrack, it feels like Christmas morning. I tell you, I've seen a lot of creativity on top of Christmas trees over the years. This may be the first Red Solo Cup, Rick. Producer Marv decorated that one. Well done. Well done. <laughs> that is a good looking and a good time. Yeah. 
Good ornaments. Great time. They had so much fun. E everybody here is having a blast. A Steelers tent and a Cowboys tent. There's a lot of conflicting fans in the infield today. <laughs> here we go for the restart. Getting ready to get stage two underway. We got Pinsky Fords in that outside line, organized and pushing. Gibbs on the inside. What will the Gibbs cars do? Christopher Bell rocketing into turn one on the inside. Get ready to see what tires are worth. Those two Penske cars didn't go oh, to pit big road. Move. Yeah, the 18, a big slide. So riding that off the middle of the three car with a big slide up the racetrack. William Byron stays right behind the 18 as they go down that short chute and into turn two. So just think about what you just said. William Byron, the guy we showed, saved his lap by a few feet is back inside the top five of this race. That's how much of a change that pass through turn three made for William Byron's day. Let's take a look at Kyle Bush, or listen to Kyle Bush. He's in the fourth position. I think we're going to have a problem here the rest of the day. I don't know if we'll be able to make it. So the trans is popping out of fourth gear. It won't stay in. If I hold it back like really hard, it'll stay. But I, I'm not sure I can maintain that. Oh, that is crushing news for the 18 team. Kyle says he's going to try to hold it in position. Remember, part of the rules, that's the same transmission he had to run yesterday. Now, they no longer shift here at Pocono in the corners like they used to years ago. They stay in high gear. But Marty, I mean, this is, with all the traffic and as tough as these three corners are, one-handed does not sound like the best approach. Well, Ben Bayshore said, we'll work on a plan back here. So they're scrambling back here to find bungee cords, whatever would work. So drivers, if you're in the seat, what can you do to make sure you hold them to gear? The traditional thing is the bungee cord, literally wrap it around the gear shift and hold it back there and forth. Does that work all day long, though? Well, it's interesting to me is he said he was going to have to really hold it back like it was going to take a lot of force to hold it back. So can he put a bungee cord in there somewhere and be able to put enough tension on it after he gets it in gear, right? you got to go through the shifts, you got to go through the restart, and then hook the bungee cord up to it. Will that have enough tension on it to keep it in gear? Talk about how important restarts are. Look at Left side brackets, Lousy, look at his hand out the window. Come on, teammate, Ryan Blaney, let's go. Everybody, though, sees that. When you're on that outside line, the 20 car, the 18, everybody, especially the 18, who's going to be important to push this 20, can see that wave and help time their run. Y'all like my circle that time. I didn't even notice. It wasn't you. I know it wasn't. I'm trying to work on this, <laughs> yeah. Rick. Trying to get my street cred back up. Brad Keselowski's out front by about 7 tenths of a second over teammate Ryan Blaney. It's Christopher Bell, Kyle Busch, William Byron, Denny Hamlin running up to the top six now. Chase Elliott also up there in seventh. Al Marola, Austin Dillon, and Ross Chastain are the top ten. My thoughts on the Kyle Busch issue with the shifting is I think every Kyle Busch fan and the crew chief on the box is hoping that he's overstating the problem. And then maybe this thing is going to work out and maybe, yeah, they get a bungee cord. He bungee cords the shifter down into fourth gear and makes do the rest of the day. But... Hopefully it's not literally popping out of gear. He's not literally driving the car with one hand. You know, and my concern as a crew chief is if it pops out of gear at the wrong time, you know, the downstream effect is could you break an engine, yeah. right? Over rev the engine and end your day. Yeah, and on top of that, not only over rev the engine, but now you have no engine braking. So if you jumps out of gear on the entrance to turn one, you're expecting to come out of the gas and the engine slow the car down. Well, if it's a neutral, it does not slow the car down and really easy to Get the, get the thing in the wall, get out of the groove. Us drivers, we're known to be a little dramatic in there when we got a problem. It's big. You were? It's massive. Oh, yeah, I was going to say, you're both going to admit that? <laughs> I can't now. Burton didn't. He didn't jump on that train. <laughs> this thing is loose. <laughs> it's the worst one I've ever driven. I used to use an audible scale. I could tell by the, by the you know, pitch of the voice how loose it was. So <laughs> we've talk, talked a lot about strategy. We have Keselowski and Blaney who has yet to come to pit road. Another car who has yet to come to pit road, the three of Austin Dillon back in the ninth position. The reason I point that out for Austin is he is currently 4.7 seconds behind the leader. He's okay as long as he stays close enough to the leader that he can come to pit road. These guys that haven't pitted, they're going to need fuel here in the next five to seven laps. So Dillon knows he's going to have to pit. Uh, so when the Bell, who I would assume will stay on the racetrack in the third position, you know, he doesn't want to lose a lap, what we just saw with Byron. You know, these strategies only work, Dave, if you can stay on the lead lap when you pit. It's 
right. And this is one of the few places on the circuit where you can do that under green. Uh, for his part, Austin said the car is pretty good. It's a little bit loose, but it's better than it was yesterday and uh, has been migrating pretty well around here. Had a couple of close calls with Denny Hamlin, but it wasn't Denny's fault. Uh, he got called clear a couple of times real close, and Denny said, if he keeps doing that, I'm going to have to send him. Uh, no one sent anybody yet, Marty. So, Dave, the Team Penske cars out front have had this plan since the beginning of the day. They wanted to run as long as they could. As Steve mentioned, they could probably get to lap, lap 43, 44, so about four more laps at least they should be able to run, but they are ready now. In fact, Jeremy Bolins a moment ago told Brad Keselowski, tell me when you see anything going on with the fuel. You shouldn't have to watch the fuel pressure, though, for another lap or so. Two-second lead over teammate Blaney Keselowski out front here at Pocono. NASCAR on NBCSN is brought to you by Ford, built Ford proud. And by PNC Bank, changing how you handle overdrafts with low cash flow. Ryan Blaney under attack from the 18. You heard him get out of the gas and Kyle Busch took advantage of that. He's up to second now. He had to lift on corner exit and that kills the straightaway down the long pond stretch into the tunnel turn and loses two spots right there. And Kyle Busch and his team got to feel good about what they've been doing the last several weeks. I think it's easy to say they were for a long time. They were the third best driver, third best team at Gibbs, you could argue, but over the last three, four weeks, they have clearly run better than their teammates. He and his crew chief Ben Bayshore are making Good changes, learning each other. This team is headed in the right direction. And Blaney losing another spot. Remember, though, they haven't come to pit road yet, so out there on some older tires compared to these guys around him. And remember, Kyle Busch has mentioned that shifter popping out of fourth gear, and he's trying to hold it into fourth gear, Dave. Austin Dillon on pit road, leaving 95 or six laps to go. That's a couple of 48s with one stop or two stops, and uh, split it into third, so. We'll see what they do from here. Four bigger tires at Sunoco Fuel. No other adjustments other than air pressure, Steve. Well, 
the, the three car had to come now because he was losing time to the leader. Um, I'm a little surprised. I'll be honest. I'm a little surprised that Brad Kozlowski has continued to lead this race as dominant as he was on those old tires. Now he comes to pit road here. But, guys, he drove out to a three or four second lead on old tires. So, Steve, an interesting call. Jeremy Bullens left it up to Brad Kozlowski when they were coming to pit road. As soon as he saw the fuel light, meaning he knew he, knew he had to go to the reserve switch, he made the call of when they came to pit road to Kozlowski coming, saying he needs a little more front grip in turn one. Turn two is the only place that he's loose. We'll see if this drafty plan from the beginning of the day works for the team. Pinsky Bunch, bottom of the screen, Ryan Blaney, who said through the heat cycle, he got tight at the end of the run. He was extremely tight. We'll see where they cycle out. Oh, Brad Kozlowski had to wait on Kyle Larson, who was coming into his pit stall. Kyle Larson pitting here as well. And the back end of the problem for Kyle Larson was right time tires and fuel. Steve on board, we were riding with him a moment ago during commercial break. He is plus 20 on the temperature. So would that start to concern you with the five and that damage they had earlier? Yeah, I mean, look right here. I mean, look at that dash. It is not just a gauge. The whole thing is flashing. It was yellowed out. Looks like it could be even red now, like you're even warmer. We see the damage on the nose of this car. I don't think the tape is an issue, but you have to ask yourself behind that nose, you know, is the duct work broken loose? Is the air going through the nose really going through the radiators or finding another place to escape? Here's how close it was for Kozlowski. He has to wait. And great work by the two car. I know that seems frustrating, but the five has the right away in my mind. Uh, so you know you hate to give up time, but even worse is pulling out and having damage in your car, Jeff. I mean, you have to let that guy enter. That, that's just understanding your situation and you know accepting it. You know you don't want to sit there and wait, but you have no choice. You can't be in denial and think everything is going to be okay. Clearly, the right choice there to sit. Steve, we still see that dash flashing, but they didn't even look at the front end of this car when they came to pit road. They just did the right side tires. And I honestly didn't see if they removed a piece of tape. Uh, if you look at the front of these cars, you know, there's not a lot of tape to remove. The way they work their ductwork now, they have these intricate things with certain holes. So you see on the front of that car, maybe there's a piece over there on the left side that can be removed. It's hard to tell from that camera shot, but, you know, if it's behind the nose, I mean, look, there's 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 two little one inch pieces of tape is the only thing I see. Now imagine how that must feel for a driver. You're, you're going to work, right? You're you're on your way to work in the morning. You're on time. And then the check engine light starts blinking in your car. And imagine that little bit of anxiety you get in that moment. Like, oh, what's wrong with my car? Why is it doing that? Well, this is exactly what he's dealing with. Now, look, it's not blinking at all. Apparently, the temperature is coming down in this car. And uh, it's in acceptable levels right now. He's not getting any warnings. Well, keep this in mind as well. He's in complete clean air. Earlier, he was in a lot of traffic behind other cars. So right now, he has tons of air going through that radiator that he did not have before. Get a few updates. Yesterday, Marty Ross Chastain finished this race in 33rd. Got to feel a little bit better on the top 10 now. Yeah, was it the finish, Rick, they wanted? But boy, they have speed, and they're showing it once again. And a backup car for Ross Chastain started in the back of the field and is up front for these drivers who pitted at lap 33. Said the car's a little bit too free, but pretty happy with it and showing the speed once again, Dave. For Joey Logano in the red and yellow 22, turn two is the only good turn, he told his team. One and three, I can't finish from the two-thirds mark out. They made a wedge and air pressure adjustment to try to adjust that last time down pit road. Hey, Dave, good news if you're an Alex Bowman fan. He said that vibration they had very early in the race and sort of the brake issues have kind of gone away. Bowman now in the top 10, getting a little bit of speed out of that 48 car, trying for back-to-back -back Pocono wins. Behind him, Kevin Harvick, who won here last year, trying to get back his car back into the top 10, Rick. And you take a look up top, Kyle Busch, William Byron. And Austin Dillon in the three, trying to save that lap after Scheduled for pit road. That car is terrible for him right now, Steve. He said, ever since I left pit road, it hit the splitter immediately, even on the straightaways. So they need to pump up the air next time a little bit more for Dylan. William Byron had gotten all but to the rear bumper of the 18 car. They went into turn one, and William had issues. Kyle was able to pull back on him. But this is a great opportunity for William. He could take advantage of that. Oh. Car not driving as well for Kyle Busch right Stuff now. Car back on the pit road, unscheduled stop. It's never a good sign when you come back on that quickly. They're going back to the right side of this car. 
It's going to be four tires and fuel, Steve. Clearly a loose wheel. We'll follow up to just double check to make sure that's the case. But Ryan Blaney, who had a terrific run yesterday and really looked like it was going to be another good run today, coming down pit road for an unscheduled stop. Yeah, a lot going on kind of all over the racetrack. And guys, Kyle Busch up front, and we talked about the issues with the transmission, but it's not bothering Kyle. In fact, so much so, he is singing while he's in the lead. I'm not kidding. Listen. I guess when, you're, I guess when your driver's singing, Steve, that's a pretty good thing, isn't it? And I don't know about race time karaoke. I'm a big karaoke fan, but carpool karaoke, carpool. Well, when do we? I mean, we rarely see this guy in in such a great mood. Yeah, he was in a great mood yesterday. Loved his car. Talked about how good it was. He's been in an awesome mood today. He just sang Steve Miller right yeah. there in the car. Kyle Busch out front, and he has a three tenths of a second lead. What's the strategy they're going to play though, Steve? They came in before the end of stage one, and now. Do you go to the middle? How far do you go in stage two before you make your way to pit road? Well, if you're going to pit in stage two, uh, well, you are going, let me rephrase that. You are going to pit in stage two, so you're probably going to run this tank of gas about as far out as you can try to get as close to the end of the stage so you have new tires for the restart. But it'll be a green flag pit stop for all of these cars. All right, the race is on. The first 500 fans to visit NASCAR.com slash Kids500 and enter the code MOTION will take home a NASCAR Kids Club Toyota Camry diecast car. Go. Family fun weekend here at Pocono. It has been amazing. The crowd that's here, the camping, and the racing. Right now, it's William Byron who's got his sights set on the 18 of Kyle Busch. He has not really gotten outside of four or five car lengths off the rear bumper of the 18 for the last 10 laps or so. They've not been able to get to that three car to lap Austin Dillon either. Dave's got more on the 24. Junior, he finished third yesterday. Talked to Rudy Fugel, his crew chief, this morning. He was so pleased with what he saw as he now ventures up to the high line a little bit there. Even though Alex Bowman won the race, he thought that Kyle Larson, Kyle Busch, and the 24 of Byron were the three best cars. The one thing that he would do differently is remember at one point they sort of jumped a few spots by taking just two right side tires. They did that but didn't adjust well enough for it. The car was way too tight. I looked him in the eye and said, so you got that figured out for today? He said, oh yeah. So if they make that play later, they've only pitted once for four, he'll know what to do. Rudy Fugger, the crew chief for William Byron. And today's Xfinity fastest lap, Kyle Larson. Imagine that, 167 mile per hour average. You got William Byron there in third, Kyle Busch in fifth as far as fast laps turned today. And we documented Kyle Larson's repairs and overheating. Well, he's currently 30th, but on the lead lap and running top five lap times almost every lap. So 
whatever the issue was for Larson and the damage and the issues for cooling, it seems like they have those resolved. Now it's just a way, can they find their way back towards the front of this pack? Let's listen in to Larson's teammate, William Byron of the 24th crew, the running second. Even if we got to push the 18 by him, we're going too slow for our strategy. So whatever we can do, we just got to get our breeze. We need to have quicker lap time for our strategy, jamming us up a little bit. Oh, man, I love that. So there's two things happening. There's a chess match on the pit boxes and a race on the racetrack. And you hope that your chess match matches the traffic on the racetrack. What I mean is those Penske cars stayed out. They're on a certain strategy. There are other cars that have pitted at 33. They're on a different strategy. William Byron pitted at 27. So really three groups of cars. And what Rudy Fugel's saying is I can kind of project where I need everybody to be around this racetrack for our strategy to work. And this number three Austin Dillon car in front of Kyle Busch or Kyle Busch in front of the 24, in his opinion, is slowing down their overall pace. So this is a point in the race. As a, as a driver, you might not with 81 to go. What's the big deal? No, the big deal is this is hurting what I'm trying to do on top of the pit box. So now, Junior, that's fine. But I'm assuming, you know, William Byron's not on a Sunday drive. Like, he is trying to run the 18 down. I know. I, I, that's... I've never heard a crew chief say that, man. You're going too slow for my strategy. <laughs> I mean, change the strategy. I'm doing driving as hard as I can drive. <laughs> no, man, you change your speed. I, I can't. <laughs> this is as fast as it goes. One guy who's running a great race just a minute ago, almost closed up to the back of this pair up front, is Christopher Bell in his 20 car. His teammate, Denny Hamlin, in fourth back there as well. So the Gibbs cars are fast today. But Christopher has really needed to start putting together some solid runs. He's moved into this 20 car this week, or this year, I'm sorry, and uh, just hasn't really been able to get out there and make things happen on a weekly basis, but it might be coming. Dave. And Adam Stevens trying to make that car come around for him. The last report before their pit stop on lap 27 under green was that it was too free through the tunnel turn. Remember, three turns here at Pocono. The tunnel turn, which he's coming up to right now, high speed, almost flat out. And through there, if you're a little bit too free, you can't do what you want to do, Kelly. A couple spots behind Bell is the nine car of Chase Elliott. He's been turning some of the fastest laps on the track, and he's pretty happy with his race car. He said it's decent right now, but he said, the worst spot for him is in turn one. And he said, then if I miss turn two, I end up blowing turn three. And that's really the challenge of the tricky triangle, isn't it, guys? You've really got to try to connect all three of these corners to really maximize your speed around here. Yeah, Kelly, it's so difficult. All three corners are different. Let's ride along with Chris Busher with this score performance cam and show you how different these corners are. Heading down into turn three. He's got a car on the inside of him. Blaney going by after that pit stop. Blaney trying his hardest to find the leader. Where's the leader at? I want to unlock myself. This is the longest straight that we have on the series. So they've talked about some new bumps down in turn one and two. Let's see if we can sense where those are with this helmet cam. Pretty rough. Wow. Yeah, that's rough off throttle. Bouncing down into the corner and then obviously in the tunnel they're really bad right over the tunnel. The earth settles around the tunnel itself underneath the racetrack, and the track just keeps going down, down, down over the years. And the winters here are really, really harsh on the surface of this track. So watch this right there. Boom, 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 boom. Just huge bumps. The yeah, thing about it, Junior, is that with this aero package, you want the car as low to the ground as you can get it. You want it out of the air. Create as little drag as you can, so to do that, going to have really stiff springs, cars going to be on the ground, and that's going to make it hard ride really, really rough through those bumps. And when the car goes across the bumps that you saw in the tunnel, it's like the rock skipping across the water. The tires are bouncing across the track. They're literally skipping up the racetrack. Kelly. More takers here on pit road. That's the 99 of Daniel Suarez coming off of his 13th place finish yesterday. He says he just needs more front turn out of his race car. You see the wrench go in to make a chassis adjustment there along with those four Goodyear tires and Sunoco fuel. A little earlier than I was expecting to see some guys come. I was expecting maybe four or five more laps for this group of car, but Trackhouse got some good-looking race cars. Man, they do. I'll give you that for sure. And some good cars on the track for speed, too. You know, Travis Mack and that whole group is, is uh, I'm going to tell you, D Junior, overperforming 
kind of what I expected that 99 to run. Week in and week out, they keep kind of climbing up inside the top 15. And I didn't expect them to be there in year one, but they're doing it. I didn't think they'd run in the top 25 on a weekly basis. And they're running in 15th, you know, 12th, sometimes close to the top 10. Incredible what they've been able to do. Track us already with actually three top 10 performances. The most recent was Nashville, where they finished seventh. William Byron, who was running second, just came to pit road, so he gave up that spot to come in and change tires and put fuel in that car. Yeah, this was basically a, a planned strategy. This was the stop. We heard some concern from on top of the pit box. Maybe that brought William Byron in a lap or two earlier uh, because we have yet to see Kyle Busch or Christopher Bell pit, and they were kind of on the same strategy. So when you talk about small choices, small audibles, maybe Rudy Fugel said, man, if we pit a lap or two earlier, maybe we can jump and leapfrog the 18, get that track position. One thing that he did also, Steve, is look what he put him in. Completely clean air. So now he can just go out and make lap time. Doesn't have to worry about anybody. He's going to run those cars down in front of him, but came off of the racetrack with clean air. These first few laps should be really, really quick. That is as important. These teams now have programs to protect where their car rejoins the racetrack. I mean, that's how they know whether they can pit without losing a lead. And Jeff, to your point, is not just the leader. Now it predicts lap traffic. Where does it put you on the racetrack? I used to go to the you know, 24 hours of Daytona and IMSA races, and that was where you heard about in laps and out laps. And now it's come to NASCAR where he has to go out there, perform right away, go out there and get up to speed, hustle through the tunnel, hustle in the turn three on cold tires with no grip to try to get out there and leapfrog this 18 car when he cycles into pit road, Marty. Hey, Junior, we're see leader Kyle Busch. In fact, JGR cars one, two, three right now. So Kyle will be coming to pit road very shortly. Steve, we've talked about this transmission issue. Kyle saying the car hopping out of fourth gear. I asked Ben Bayshore a moment ago, I said, do you hand him a bungee cord on this stop or not? He said, I don't even want to talk about it right now. And the four coming down pit road right now, he said, I'm not going to do it under green. I do not want to hand him a cord under green. I don't want him messing with it. I only want to do it under caution. That's their plan. Kevin Harvick coming down pit road. He among those that pitted in lap 27. Harvick will hit here for four Goodyear tires and also Sunoco fuel. And he should be able to clearly make it to the end of the stage and a little bit further. But the 18 still running out front, Steve, and they pitted at lap 27. Yeah, I do like that report. I wouldn't mess with that bungee cord under green as well. It's just so much time to lose. You hope you could do it under yellow. And at some point, if you run far enough into the race rig, I know it's awful to say, but man, we have track position. You're going to have to do it one handed, buddy. I, I, we just can't go to the back of the field to give you this bungee cord. And again, the question is, is that gear shifter popping out of fourth gear, which Kyle had said to crew chief Bayshore earlier? Well, it's not popped out of fourth gear or any, I don't think, on this run. We know that by looking at the lap time or the speed of the car. But, uh, and the transmission coming from the, 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 the signal coming from the car would not have been very positive no. either. <laughs> I think it's staying in gear whether he's holding it in gear or not. But. Hopefully, I, I'm like the crew chief, man. Don't mention it. Don't say anything. Hopefully, it's it's not an issue and it goes away, or he's found a way to deal with it inside the car. He's got great lap time, good pace. 
Yeah, I'm interested to see. I thought that call from William Byron to come to pit road would drive some more teams to pit as well as we see the 11 of Denny Hamlin now making his way on the pit road. Dave. Yeah, and he told uh, Chris Gabart, his crew chief, when I try to carry too much speed, I'm really tight on late exit. So they'll make an adjustment for that. Looks like it's going to be air pressure for Hamlin. They'll get that windscreen clear by pulling a tear off off the front. Four Goodyear tires and Sunoco fuel for Denny. You mentioned it. Byron's out there running 50, 52 flats, or 53 flats, and Kyle Busch of 52, 54, four, so a second and a half in one lap. If Kyle's lost to Byron or Byron's gained, that leapfrog is going to happen. How long does this 18 stay out here? Losing time like yeah, that. I'm shocked they haven't pitted yet. I mean, right now, Byron's a little bit behind the Penske cars who have only stopped once, but much faster. He should overtake them. Obviously, the 18, they're not worried about just one car. They figure they're going to stay out there and just stick to their plan, Marty. Steve Ben Bayshore told Kyle Busch a moment ago, he said, we're going on you. Run until your switch, meaning they'll flip the reserve switch. So until he hits that, they're going to stay on the racetrack. Wow, it's a totally different strategy than Byron. Byron again with a 53-1. The second and three tenths uh, faster than Kyle Busch that lap. Well, we saw this out of the 18 yesterday. Remember, they pitted in the middle of the race. And what I mean by this is they ran long, long, long and kept as much fuel in the car to make that last pit stop be as short as possible. So, you know, that's the strategy here. Why are they running long? Well, they're not afraid of the 24. He's only one car that might leapfrog them. And they want to just keep as much fuel in the car throughout the day. So if it does come down to a cycle towards the end, they can put the least amount of fuel in and have the fastest stop at the point that they feel it's going to matter the most. Here comes Christopher Bell on the pit road in second place. Bell was 1.2 seconds behind Kyle Busch. Dave. And when he radioed the crew, it was coming to you, coming to you, coming to you. Like he had seen the lights flash and felt the car bobbing just a little bit. So hopefully he keeps it fired up on that particular run. He was loose for the tunnel turn, but tighter as he run, ran. But he only went to half a number tight, Kelly. I think he can live with that. You see the night car of Chase Elliott also on pit road. He said he was getting tighter at the end of that run and he had trouble sucking up to the cars ahead of him like he could do better yesterday. Four tires, fuel, and an air pressure adjustment. And that's the 19 of Martin Truex Jr. who was good in one and three, a bit too loose in turns two. You saw the chassis adjustment there. And tires for Jr. Back out onto the racetrack. I'm impressed by the fuel mileage of Kyle Busch. We have everybody that came on the same line he did already come to pit road. So, you know, doing a nice job on the racetrack and perhaps doing a nice job on the caution flag that he had, saving a lot of fuel. Oh, this time. This time, there you have it. So now what we'll have the opportunity to do is see perhaps one of the best in the business come on to pit road, and that's Kyle Busch. And then we'll be able to compare him when he rejoins to William Byron, who we mentioned pitted earlier with great speed in his car. Kelly. And I think this pit couldn't come soon enough for Eric Almirola, who said he was getting exponentially tighter as he got in traffic. He also said something felt weird in the right front. You can see a chassis adjustment there for Almirola, along with four Goodyear tires, Dave. Bottom of the screen, Kurt Busch pretty quiet during this run. He'll get four tires and fuel, and he's gone. All right, so as we thought, here comes the 18 of Kyle Busch on a pit road. He slowed way down getting into or getting on to pit road. Yeah, you see on the bottom left, 18 is now on pit road in that little, basically the track map, the 24, top of the track map heading into the tunnel. That will be the two cars compared to each other in the blend for position as the 18 leaves after his stop, Marty. Steve, what out a stint truck. for Kyle Busch. Eight laps further than William Byron, and you're right. Watch the 24 kind of come around. There he's going into turn three. Kyle seeing the car is a little bit too tight on exit. That's his biggest problem. You can see him kind of messing with the gearship inside of the car, making sure that it goes into gear when the guys come around. So if they're not going to put the uh, bungee cord in, as we mentioned. Also, Alex Bowman's going to slide in. Right the car's stuck in gear. And it's stuck. Yes, it is stuck in there. Couldn't get it to fire. He's going to lose a ton of track condition through that exchange. It's, a, it's in high gear, too. It's as yeah. slow it's rolling. It's probably in fourth gear and he just can barely get it moving it's going to be a really slow out lap man if he if it was stuck in gear on pit entry and he somehow guessed the right pit road speed that's amazing because everything's set off rpms in second if he was stuck in fourth i'm not sure how you guess how you come down pit road i don't either i don't know how you guess but you guys mentioned how slow he was maybe he realized when he was trying to downshift before he crossed the line the commitment cone 
he realized, I can't get it out of gear. I'm going to have to really overdo this or slow this car way down. Dave. Joey Logano cycled to the top of the chart. Wasn't that disappointed with his race cars? You see Chastain now challenging Kyle Busch. But he said it took too long for it to get where it needed to be. So hopefully they'll make an adjustment there so it gets to Joey's liking a little bit quicker on this run. So let's let's talk about this 18 car. So he might take off and be just fine right here under under green, right? It's in fourth gear, everything he needs to do. Not going to shift anyway. But if they can't fix something, every time they come to pit road, they're going to be stuck in fourth gear. Well, remember the stage is about done here. He's got to slow down for that yeah, for think, restarts. Yeah, think about restarts trying to get that thing going, Marty. Well, and Junior, I mentioned that he kind of, you could see him just playing with a shifter knob a lot more than he normally does inside the car. It's almost like he was trying to force it out of fourth and couldn't get it to go. So this is going to be a problem for this 18 who clearly has a terrific car, has led 28 laps to this point. But if he's stuck in fourth, it's going to be a nightmare rest of the day. I'm not sure the problems aren't on the racetrack, too, because he missed turns one and two pretty bad. 42 car, Chastain goes around. It did it jump out of gear there. You know, could it possibly jump out of gear in turn one? And that's why he got out of the groove. Bubba Wallace is out front right now. He'll still have to come to pit road. Only 10 laps to go in stage two. Tim with a bunch of <laughs> today's zero coverage brought to you by Geico. We look down on this two and a half mile train the racetrack. Out front it's still Bubba Wallace. William Byron is now running second. Brad Keselowski third. Denny Hamlin is fourth. Keselowski on a different pit strategy as is Bubba Wallace who now is coming to pit road. Kelly. And they waited until Bubba Wallace had to flip the fuel switch to bring him to pit road. It will be a fuel only stop for Bubba and the team has also been eyeballing what they thought could be some damage on the right side from Bubba and you see him pulling out there on the right rear to clear that tire. He did get into the wall earlier in this race but a fuel only stop there for Bubba. Eight laps go to the end of the stage. They basically are doing this to save the lap. You know they were Trying to get some track position. They assume the back half of the lead lap will pit again at the end of this stage. As now we look in at, oh, I thought we were going to look in at the 18 box. We're talking about what they're going to do to try to fix their transmission situation. We talked about it on the break. There's just not a lot you can do. You know, getting some parts and pool bungee cords ready. Well, but the, I don't know what's better. It was jumping out of yeah. gear. Now it won't come out of gear, Jeff. I, I'm, I'm a little torn. Marty. They see they are making a plan. You see Nate Bellows, the longtime car chief for Kyle Busch in the 18 team. Here's the plan. Ben Bates will re relay a moment ago over the radio. So we got here. We'll pick for four, and we'll, uh, we'll have to have someone jump in the car and try to untie it with a pry bar from the top. We'll cut the boot and uh, try to get it from the top. So that will be Nate Bellows who will climb inside the car trying to make this happen. And uh, I don't know if it's going to fix it or not, Steve. I don't think it's going to make the transmission operable at that point, fully operable, I should say. But they're going to try something here on the 18. Well, I don't want to discourage Kyle Busch fans, but I definitely took him out of my fantasy lineup and went with Ryan Blaney. And I only say that because, Jail, you and I, you know, these transmissions aren't like they used to be. The linkage isn't out on the outside. There's a lot of internal working parts. And my concern is even if it sticks in fourth gear, restarts. I mean, he's going to lose, what, every position. I don't even know how he would stay in the field restart in fourth gear going down to turn one without getting run over. Uh, so they have to come up with a plan, work on it under this stage break. But it'll be, I'll say, a bit surprising if they can somehow remedy the situation for the 18. Unfortunate, a great race car yesterday. Finished second. 
Battle all the way up. Led laps, 28 of them here in this race. And then an issue with the linkage and the transmission. So now he's struggling, stuck in fourth gear. So with six laps to go, I think we should just you see the leaderboard on the left hand side of your screen. So William Byron feeling good about his strategy. It's working very good. Fast race cars, a battle between Kevin Harvick and Kurt Busch here on track. Keslowski, Hamlin, Bell, Chase Elliott. We talked about having a good run. Truex, a little bit of question, Jeff. You and I said, hey, could Truex keep his track position? He's done a nice job. And how about Larson? Some repairs. Now they're solidly inside the top. They're an off strategy. That's solid there. Almirola the same way. His car wasn't driving as good as he wants, but here he is inside the top 10. Dave. After pit, pit stops, especially under green flag conditions, drivers sometimes have questions. Here was Kurt a moment ago. All right. You guys are going to pass up on tight wheels. We'll see what happens here. Yep, buddy. I believe we're all good here. Asked the team to fess up if they saw any loose wheels from their data. The answer was no, and Kurt's been running faster laps than the leader in some cases. Last time by, he was quickest. A lot of drivers worrying about loose lug nuts or loose wheels. Well, clearly they're feeling the vibration and wonder sometimes if they're not feeling the splitter, you know, on the racetrack. And some tires shake more than others. That sounds crazy, but one, you know, this is a new tire here, and sometimes tires shake. And sometimes the wheels lose. That too. William Byron is out front now. He has a 2.1 second lead over Brad Kozlowski, Denny Hamlin running in the third position, Christopher Bell and Chase Elliott all in the top five. Alex Bowman right there. Joe Logano, Bowman in 13th place, Logano 14th, Tyler Reddick right there in front of these guys. That's the guy that jumped out at me, right? Just having, you know, a nice, solid day, just trying to keep himself in the playoff picture. You see him right there in the 12th position, you know, that currently puts him above the cut line, 51 points, you know, just... We keep saying, how many winners are we going to have? You know, we don't know, but all you can do is score as many points as possible. Try to keep yourself in it. Don't panic. Don't tear up your race car. Uh, you know, we see who he's racing. Kurt Busch is just below him. Busher and Stenhouse. Suarez, we continue to talk about Suarez's good runs. So, you know, don't give away free points. You just got to manage each day for what you have as far as speed. And again, behind the wheel of the 77. That's actually Justin Allgaier. Haley was supposed to be behind the wheel. And Justin Haley in a pretty violent accident in the Xfinity Series race. He said he was okay, uh, but they made the decision at Spire Motorsports to, to put Justin Allgaier behind the wheel of that 77. As we see Bowman, yesterday's winner. There's Kurt Busch. Out there, yes, Kurt Busch also. He ran these guys down. You know, we just saw him pass Harvick, and he's cut into this uh, the distance to this little group here. So one car's got pretty good pace. Surprising because Kurt's not had the year that I expected him to have compared to last year. They haven't had the pace or the finishes. Had a good few weeks though. Yeah. Really gained a ton of points. Yes. Seems like they're turning the corner and getting back to what they know. They're also benefiting a lot from Chevrolet success. Just how good the Chevrolet's been this year. Pit road is closed. They're under two laps to go in this stage. And we talk engine motorsports and the speed of the cars. The other thing that I don't know if we talk about enough is the, you know, strength across the board with the driver group, right? I mean, Dale, we talk, you know, so yesterday it was a Kyle Larson flat that led to an Alex Bowman win. Now here we are, a day later, Kyle Larson doing nice, recovered up to seventh, but his teammate, William Byron, leading this race. It's like if you could cycle one of them out of the lead, another one pops up. That has to be frustrating for everybody trying to catch the hedge of the Shepherds. Oh, Denny Hamlin going around Brad Kozlowski. Brad's have great pace, but that's a good, bold move for Denny. And Brad's on much older tires. Yeah, but Denny's showing, showing some speed here. He may be a guy that can bring the fight to Byron later in this race. And I think Kozlowski guys are just kind of saving fuel at this point. They're planning likely to not stop at the end of the stage and go a little bit further. So they actually said, let the 11 go. We need to save fuel right here. I will say that the 11 is not a driver you want to get on fire. Right? I mean, winless this year, six-time winner at Pocono. We talked yesterday and a little bit more this morning about how this was a barometer for, for the 11 bunch, a winner here a year ago. So it's going to be interesting to see. And I can't I mean, – William Byron was two feet, three feet from being lapped in stage one. I, I, 
continue to circle back around to that move he made on Truex in turn three. If he wins the race, go all the way back to the end of stage one is the moment that kept him in it. William Byron wins stage two for Pocono. Denny Hamlin right there in striking distance. Brad Kozlowski, Christopher Bell. Chase Elliott will be the top five from stage two. William Byron, as you mentioned, unlaps himself at the end of stage one and now is able to win stage two. It was just that close and not even close in his stage two win. NBC Sports on Sirius XM. That's NASCAR Radio Channel 90. This week, Dale Earnhardt Jr. is going to break down what we've seen here this weekend for Pocono as well as look ahead to Road America for next week. That's live Wednesday at 9 a.m. Eastern. NBC Sports on Sirius XM. Okay. Quite a few are making their way onto pit road now, led by the two of Brad Keselowski. Party. Well, Rick, the original plan was they were going to stay out here, but they made the audible here to bring Brad Kozlowski down pit road. Jeremy Boland said, hey, do you want to be freed up for traffic? He said, I'm really more worried about how much our car is falling off at the end of the run. So that's what they're going to work on with air pressure for Brad Kozlowski. Meanwhile, Kyle Busch further forward on pit road. They're going to do a regular stop on this stop. Then on the next stop, that's when they're going to do all the work inside the car for the 18. And we'll see how slow he takes off here, kind of waiting on the fuel to make sure they get all the fuel in. Actually, no, they make the audible as well. Nate Bellow's going to climb in here. The car chief, first he's going to cut the boot, which is around the shifter knob. And then he's going to literally try to knock it out of gear. I asked Nate what happens then. He said, I have no idea. We hope it works. We're not sure if this is going to fix it. And so they're going to work on the 18. Kyle Busch, can they fix it? And he'd be competitive once again this afternoon. Getting ready for the final stage of the Explore the Pocono Mountains 350 of Pocono Raceway this is the NASCAR Cup Series. And let's check in with Rutt, KP, and DJ. Oh, Rick, we're having a great time watching. We're getting ready for the NASCAR America Post Race Show. Kyle, what do you think so far? Hey, listen, new day, new players. We've seen Lord Byron up front. We see Denny Hamlin up front. I mean, it's just a different group than we saw yesterday, which is amazing. That's what's cool about Pocono. That's what's cool about a doubleheader. Yeah, really unfortunate for Kyle Busch. Had a great car once again, opportunity to win the race. But what I'm most impressed with, William Byron making that pass in the stage one to get himself in this position. And then Denny Hamlin, we've been saying, if he can't run good here, they're in real trouble. He's running good today. Absolutely. It's all about position there. Speaking of position, Jack, where are you, my friend? Fellas, I have been living in the RV forest for two days, but we've never seen anything like this. My guy, Jeremy Smith. He fixes chimneys for a living and he needed a new work vehicle, said it was a no-brainer. You can't find a better maintained vehicle than an ambulance. So I said, do the lights still work? He said, yeah, that's why I bought it. <laughs> Back to you, Rick. <laughs> that is brilliant. A uh, beautiful, beautiful way to watch the race from here at Pocono. And I'm sure that uh, the crew on that 18 team, Marty, not as excited about watching what's going on right now. Uh, inside that car with the shifter. Well, they tried to get it out of fourth, but it's just stuck in fourth. And then they left pit road and they were just going to live with it for the rest of the day. But you see the NASCAR official there looking inside. He said not good because they cut the shifter boot off. NASCAR did not like that. So they had to cover all of that area up. So now Kyle once again is going to have to leave in fourth gear. And you hear his straining to get the car to go. the clutch in that kind of a position for too long. Yeah, right now I think it's about just trying to finish the laps. 51 laps to go so they can nurse this 18 car to the finish. Let's listen in to what the 18's discussing. You didn't happen to tie me for how long it took me to get from off of pit road to start finish, Hirschman, did you? No, I didn't. I just got my info that we got in the drive report. <laughs> you don't have uh, shifter boot taping info? No. Pace car's in the middle of turn three right now, and he's coming down Long Pond straight for the tunnel turn. And the reason NASCAR wants that shifter boot on there is that's fire protection. If there's a fire underneath that car and that shifter boot's not in place, that fire comes up through the tunnel, completely exposes Kyle Busch to those lanes. Field coming back to the Geico restart zone. 
and ready to be back in the way. William Byron, Denny Hamlin, as well as Christopher Bell up here fighting for the lead. A major block at the top of the screen. Looks like between Briscoe and can't tell that's Stenhouse. Stenhouse. Yeah. yeah. A little bobble by Denny, Denny right there, but stays on the outside of his teammate Christopher Bell. And a chaos behind that. Oh, man, somebody back there, a little bit of smoke. I don't know if they got in the fence off of the corner. William Byron up front, Denny Hamlin running second. And it's Chase Elliott who's made his way up into the top three. Blaney in that 12 car, that yellow 12 car, he is on the lead lap. Remember, he had to pitch twice, but stayed on the lead lap through all that. Oh, he is taking his way up through there. Harvick on the outside. Up by McDowell. <laughs> Haven't said a lot about Kevin Harvick. He was a winner here a year ago. Thought this might be a barometer for how the team is running, and right now, not as well as they were hoping for. He's outside the top 10. Name we haven't really mentioned right in front. Oh, the 43, 43 is up the racetrack. There's Eric Jones. Make contact. Something. All right, get to the bottom. Left front tire. Get flat. to the bottom. You can see a bunch of damage in the left front fender. Yeah, I can't tell if you're. Somebody's got some pretty bad damage. Did hit nothing. Just the right side down. 7K to hold back in on, on that right, restart. That was the smoke I think I saw on the back straightaway. And eventually it must have flattened the left front tire. He's got some damage to the right rear quarter panel. He said the right side's down, but it's that left front tire that's completely flat right now. I think he's talking about the damage to the right rear quarter panel being knocked down. But he said somebody caved the back in on it too. So I can't quite see it. Uh, yeah, that's what he okay. mentioned. Blaney looking at the inside of Harvick. As I was mentioning before that, right behind these two, Ryan Priest. Ryan Priest in the 13 the cautions is out. Yeah. A long way around here on a flat tire. A lot hear of that? debris. You yeah. Hear that? As soon as the caution came out, boom, knock it in neutral, shut it off, save fuel. 43's made its way onto pit road now. Oh, oh, don't, don't Actually, change it. Don't yeah, do anything. He needs to back up. Yeah, can't cross, can't work the car. So it's back in a box. I don't know if you can tell. Something happened. You called it, Junior. Something happened off turn one. We saw some smoke. So he's got damage to the left front. He's hit somebody there. He's got damage to the, the right rear that somebody's hit. So none of that looks like wall damage to me. So look, look at this right here coming off the corner, bottom of the screen. Seven car runs in the back of the 43 because the 43 hit somebody in front of him. I don't know which car that was, but. Oh, yeah, they stack up. I, there's that. The 38. I yes. think he ran in the back of the 38 car. Anthony Alfredo. Who has uh, started off having a bad day with a right front tire issue early. A bunch of stack up there and kind of similar. There it is. There's the damage to Oh, the 41. Yeah, the 41. Sorry. Cole Custer, who had an awful day yesterday. Big crash on the front straightaway. Cole, another frustrating day here. Well, we are looking forward to the Olympics. They begin July 23rd, live from Tokyo. We'll be on NBC. Getting us into Olympic fever. Steve Letard, actually NASCAR <laughs> Chasm, had some fun with Steve. Well, the Olympic <laughs> rings drawn by Steve Letard. You know, there are times where you, I mean, it's uh, I got nothing for him. He's absolutely right. That's how I would do it. They look great. That's. That's A+. Plus. I mean, oh. that's some good humor. You know what's sad? Is they look better than yours. <laughs> Your circle that you tried to draw. <laughs> oh, oh, all right, goodness. so back to the race. Yes. Let's get off this. Uh, no, no, I did. It was messed up. On a serious note on this race, though, as we see the 43 continue. 47 laps to go. Our man, Stat Guy Russell over here, said we've seen some cars run 46 laps earlier today while they were aided by yellow. I believe the leaders are all going to come. I think you cannot miss this opportunity to make this a few mileage race. I would have to come to pit road and be full of fuel. And with that said, a hard left-hand turn by some, oh, but not all. Not everybody. Interesting. 
as soon as Denny Hamlin heard that word, they had a code word for it, he went, uh, uh, okay. And Kbart said, yeah, that's a tough call, but we're going to have to do it. They'll pit the 11 car, fuel only for Denny. Meanwhile, behind him, the 24 of William Byron, he'll get four fresh Goodyear tires. Why would you put four tires on and lose all that track position, Steve? So many cars taking gas, gonna pull out in front of this 24 car. Marty. Gonna be fuel only for Kyle Larson. Yes, yeah, so Junior, they're about five laps short from here from being able to make it to the very end. So, I don't know, Steve, you get some caution, why not roll the dice here? Yeah, uh, listen, you, I like this call. I think give yourself an opportunity now to answer Dale Junior's question about why you put tires on, buddy. Much like my telestrating, I don't have a good answer for that pitch strategy either. So I'm 0 for 2 so far. NASCAR on NBCSN is brought to you by Credit One Bank, the official credit card of NASCAR. Visit GoCreditOne.com. And by Ram Trucks, the only truck brand to win Motor Trend Truck of the Year three years in a row. We saw a lot of guys coming to pit road and then some venturing off and going back out to the racetrack. Take a look here. Well, see the nine car, Chase Elliott. I'm going to pit, I'm going to pit. No, I'm not going to pit, but when he was doing all of that, he did not maintain speed. Watch a 20 car right here. 20 car gets in front of him right there. So NASCAR has deemed that the 20 car is now the leader of the race because Chase Elliott did not maintain speed behind the pace car. So that means that Chris Bell was able to choose whichever lane he wanted to go in. He's on the outside and the nine of Chase Elliott will line up behind him. Yes, that's right. Alex Bowman yesterday's winner is in the front row on the inside. And this is how he ended up winning the race. A great restart gets him back out in front again potentially here as he's trying to clear the 20 he does and the pushing that Chase Elliott was doing down the straightaway head. Christopher Bell all out of shape. Chastain tries to fit in that hole. He's gonna side draft Christopher Bell and pull up beside him into the tunnel turn. 
drives it deep into the tunnel turn, trying to make that spot. Not going to be able to take it. Chris Real fights back on the outside. Kevin Harvick side by side back there with Chase Elliott battling hard. Chastain down into turn three. Drifts up a little bit. He's sliding up into the groove. Oh, there's contact with the wall with Christopher Bell. Christopher Bell has quite a bit of damage now to that right side. Kevin Harvick taking advantage of that. Cleared both of them. And Chase Elliott had control of this race. And now is behind all this chaos. Way up the racetrack goes the 42, Ross Chastain. Does he have a flat right? Uh, the right front's low. Yeah, the right front splitters on the ground. From that contact, I would assume. Yep. Oh, yeah. So take a look right here. They don't hit very hard, but right oh, there. bang. Couple right. times. You know, Ross Chastain is an aggressive race car driver, and that serves him well. It also hurts him sometimes. Now he tries to get to the inside. He knows he's got to come to pit road. And if you're any of those drivers that just pitted for fuel, you are screaming for a yellow. There's debris. There's this. Oh, oh the 20's oh. wrecking. A huge hit for the 20. Does he have issues from the safe contact? Christopher a lot of damage on the right a rear. A lot of damage to the right coming. rear. Still no caution. Everyone going straight. No caution, but a huge parachute of damage on the right rear of that 20 is definitely going to affect the handling and the speed. He's going to get down and out of the way here. While you see Chastain coming to pit road to take care of that right front tire. I think the 20 is going to have to come to pit road as well. Let's see how that happened off of turn four. Chase is on the inside. He gets loose oh. the track. Oh, man. Look how far around Christopher Bell is. What well, is a pretty good save. The wall helped him a lot. But, man, two laps in a row, Christopher gets used up off the corner. That replay was great. I thought the 20 just lost. It was anything but contact from the nine. Obviously, sent him around. Man, it's a shame. Good run for the 20. Kind of yeah. gone away. I, He's Christopher on pit road. He's not a happy guy at the moment. Dave. Crew Chief Adam Stevens calling out that they'll do right sides and damage repair while he inspects the left side to see if they need to work on that or change the tires. He says left side is fine, so it's going to be right sides, and they've got to make sure they get that right rear fender uh, pushed out and right side roof flap as well. Ropes back. A lot of work going on. The 20, and again, we're under green. One guy that's made hay in all of this mess is this guy right here, we're riding on the roof of Ryan Blaney's car. Fourth performance cam down the front straightaway. He's moved all the way up to fourth place, had an issue earlier in the race, had to come down pit road, change tires. Thought he had a loose wheel or a flat. He has really good speed, and he's angry. Driving angry, man. Hey, Junior, take us inside the driver's helmet. They did have that right front that was loose earlier. Had to make that unscheduled stop. But when that happens, are you a little more motivated? Not that you need more motivation, but to recover from that penalty for Ryan Blaney and this team now running for so impressive. It's very impressive, and he needs a good run, good solid to finish it. You know, obviously, won here before, so he loves this racetrack, the nine car. You see him having issues down on the bottom of your screen, losing a lot of speed and pace through the tunnel turn. He may have an issue. Yeah, he's slowing down. He's going to come to pit road. Chase Elliott with a flat. Flat right front. Yep, flat right front. You see the damage on the nose. That was sustained in an earlier restart, and he's just dropping back for that. Flat, uh, flat right front. They're going to bring him in for four Goodyear tires and top him off with fuel. That all started with the fake on the pit road. He would have restarted with the lead, and instead he got put back, ended up making contact. Problems compound. Now here you are on pit road, having to change your right front tire under green. And on the bottom, you want to talk about a battle. The one of Kurt Busch a little bit ahead of these two, the 11 and the 24. The three guys that are the best on fuel. You see last pit on the left side of your screen. Those three all came at lap 94. We're not sure if they can make it, but they definitely need the least amount of fuel if they pit under green. If they get a caution, Jeff, I would argue they could just stay on the racetrack. So they are racing like this is the track position for the win, even with 39 to go, Rick. Bowman's still out front, but we know he has to come to pit road as we go NASCAR nonstop.
First two weekends that we have been back at the track have been amazing. Nashville last weekend, Pocono this weekend, and next weekend, Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin. That's right, 4th of July weekend, Saturday. Countdown to green for the Xfinity Series, 2 and 2.30. Then Sunday, the 4th of July, 2 o'clock, 2.30. Road course racing, it's going to be incredible. So, I, 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 I can't wait to get there. I've never been to Road America. So, me, you, drivers, we're going to, you know, borrow the pace car, go for some laps. i got to check that place out. I've never, I mean, I've seen it on TV, never been there in person. I like it said borrow. I thought we were just going to take it. <laughs> well, if you're driving, you people, can take it. People have done that before. As we see again, Alex Bowman won yesterday. And now the nine of Chase Elliott back on the Got another right front tire yeah. flat. I think it right front. Fender is bent in and flattening that right front tire. This is the second time in just a few laps. Marty. We see Ryan Blaney coming down pit road. His teammate Joey Logano pitted a moment ago. He was fuel only when he came down pit road. Going to be the same for Ryan Blaney and a piece of tape on. So, Steve, there's a lot of strategies going on. Some teams 10 laps short. You see Chase Elliott on pit road fixing that uh, damage from earlier, that right front that went flat. And you also have some other drivers who are four lap shirt. And believe it or not, Kyle Busch still in the game. They told him a moment ago, we're only one lap short. And he's in 13. So if that's true, Kyle Busch came in lap 95, one lap after the majority of the guys that pitted under the yellow. So if he's one short, then Hamlin, who's a couple spots in front of him, got to be two laps short. I mean, that's, it used to be easier to save fuel here when you used a lot of brake and you, and you shifted Jeff. But their time of wide open throttle is so high. I, I mean, how do you save gas now? Well, if you're Kyle Busch, you thought your day was over anyway. Yeah. So you just go ahead and just say, you know what? This thing's going to go green. I got to find the lap. I just got to find it. Got to back my pace off, get off the throttle sooner, get on the throttle later, and just see what happens. See if you get lucky and things fall your way. But drivers like Bowman, Harvick, Kozlowski, Reddick, uh, McDowell all have to come back to pit road. There's just no way they can save enough fuel to get to it, 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 Yeah, I, I can't see any sort of way that they're going to make it. Harvick run Bowman down. You know, been all over him. Just can't quite make the pass, but he's had the same pace as Bowman, not a little bit faster. Kevin Harvick, that barometer we talked about, now running in second. Marty. And just checked in with Rodney Childers a moment ago. He told Kevin Harvick to push the 48 hard because the 48 has to save more fuel than you. And Harvick is nine laps short himself. So they know they can't make it to the NC, but he wants him to push the 48 here, trying to force him to come to pit road a little bit earlier. Yeah, so Bowman was last on pit road at 73, Harvick at 87. So Harvick has 14 laps more fuel on board, which just helps them with their last pit stop strategy. There's a lot of moving parts to this chess match. The most important thing is the chess match on the racetrack is going to get played out with who can execute. And you talked about it earlier, Jeff. A lot of opportunity to make mistakes on and off pit road. Um, and I'm with you. Kyle Busch has nothing to lose. So I don't believe, I mean, coming to pit road with only fourth gear, he's going to lose what? I mean, 10 spots. It's going to be major. He's almost silly as it sounds. Better to just run out on the white flag lap. He'd probably lose less spots coasted around. Yeah. He, he can't, he almost can't pit at this point. The last thing Kyle wants to see is a yellow. Just, I mean, his best chance is for to go green. Man, Harvick. <laughs> He's forget working it. hard, ain't Yeah, it? well, forget where it kind of comes out with the strategy and all this. I think this is what everybody was wondering is, where, where are we going to see some pace out of the four car this weekend? And here he is pushing the, the winner from yesterday. Man, oh, Bowman didn't just touch the apron. He was on it right yeah, there. Yeah, they get he? on there pretty hard. That's why I think that issue with Larson yesterday happens is low air pressure the bumps and the flexing of the sidewall and the contact patch of the tire, plus hitting that apron. He's pretty hard, hard on it in front. We talked about the people with a bunch of different strategies just to keep you up to speed. William Byron has passed Kurt Busch. So Byron is now the first car with the best fuel load. Still not sure if he can make it, but he's in the sixth position. Harvick moves up, trying to get a little extra grip and momentum off the high side. about a second, two tenths on Brad Kozlowski back there. You see Brad in the background coming through the corner. Tyler Reddick, three and a half seconds behind the leader. William Byron, 9.6 seconds back. 
So, I, yeah, I, I want to eavesdrop in on William Byron. We'll be listening to their radio. We'll play something if we hear it. But are, are, is the 24 strategy to show the speed in their car and try to push these guys in front? Or now that they're in front of Kurt Busch, the only one with any sort of reasonable chance to make it, Jeff, do you, does Rudy Fugel just back William Byron up and say, hey, we're really only racing Kurt Busch now? They just told William Byron to really increase his speed, run hard on the laps, and then Tab Boyd, his spotter, said the difference is going to be time spent here on pit road. So you would expect that to mean that Byron will have to get a splash, but if he can get less than others. Yeah, so that's the whole key. Can he get less than others? I'm just not sure. I think someone's going to try to run out of gas. 47, Smoke. smoking out the pipes. Yeah. Never good. So unfortunate for Ricky yep, Stenhouse Yeah, he said he'd been Jr. losing a cylinder, guys. Uh, that's and he's turning straight in. Tough left-hand turn for a guy trying to score some points. Yeah, 15th yesterday in the race. Yeah, so back to that strategy call, you know, you have to decide, Jeff, right? Are you running hard for a gas and go, or are you saving gas? You kind of get stuck in the middle of the four. Says he knows he can't make it. He's going to come get fuel now in case the yellow comes out. Yeah, see, that's a terrific point, and that's what Rodney Childers, he didn't want to kind of get caught in the middle here, saying, hey, I know I'm not going to make it. He told me a moment ago, and as we just said, they were nine laps short, so let's take the fuel now, and let's see if we can gain some track position on some of these guys. You're going to see a number of cars start to pit here, Kelly. Including Michael McDell in the 34 car. He had cycled back up towards the top five. He said his car fires off good. Then he's a bit free on entry, but snapping loose on exit. Two tires there for Michael McDowell. All right, as we see Kevin Harvick exit below at the bottom of the screen to your left, William Byron. Why are we showing him? We know he can make it on gas. He's been on pit road for sure. He can make it to the finish. So Kevin Harvick, either with fast laps, a fast strategy, a short gas fill, all of the above, has cycled as, how do we want to put it? This is the for sure group. Right. He's leaving the for sure safe on fuel group. We saw a car being pushed back on pit road. That's Timmy Hill in the 66, his crew. Trying to get him going. Can't get that car fired. They're still struggling on pit road. But Alex Bowman, Brad Kozlowski, Tyler Reddick, William Byron, Kurt Busch, the top five. Bowman will still have to come to pit road, but when will he make that move? Try to get that splash. We'll go NASCAR nonstop.
Brad Keselowski out front. Tyler Reddick, William Byron, maybe tries to make it all the way. William Byron came at lap 94. Keselowski and Reddick both came to pit road at 87. All right, so my brain got a little ahead of my, or my mouth got a little ahead of my brain. Okay. It happens sometimes, and I misspoke. So here's basically what you have. On the left-hand side, Keselowski must pit. Reddick must pit. Byron, Bush, Hamlin, Larson, we, they're close. They're two, three, four short. They're trying to stretch. Look down to Kevin Harvick. That's the four sure guys. He pitted at lap 112. He can make it. I misspoke. I meant to say Blaney, second of the four sure group. So that's where we're at kind of currently, I believe that someone in that lap 94 pit window is going to try to stretch it. Let's listen in to Kurt Busch in the one. All right, I'll see it on a couple corners. Let's see what it Just start saving. You're all good here, bud. Just keep saving. Let's see what kind of lap time we can get. Yeah, I think your 80% procedure earlier is probably not a bad approach where you were. All right, Jeff, that makes us feel good. You and I keep looking at each other up, uh, up here like someone's going to have to try it. We keep hearing all these radios like, oh, no, they can't make it. They can't make it. Dale, I believe. We're going to run out on the racetrack. At this point, we are all the chips are in, the cards are dealt. I'm done. I'm getting a cold water. Tell you, man, I'll see you again, hopefully, at the end of the race, not a I, lap early. Dude, I love these kind of races that come down to who can save and who can't. And some guys are going to figure it out. Some guys know they practice this. They got this figured out and know exactly how much stall they need to use. Dave. All right, here's what I think I know. Uh, William Byron having a conversation just now being told to go like crazy and Williams saying I don't think we can save that much didn't hear how much that much was you see Tyler Reddick needing a splash there Denny Hamlin is going to go for it he is saving more than he was before and he said he'd like the numbers from the pit box as for Kurt Busch we heard going at 80 percent so they're going to try to make it that's what I know so, so behind but real quick guys behind them Kyle Larson is sitting there in the fifth position I just checked in with Cliff Daniels again and he said nope we're still three laps short we're gaining on it we are gaining some ground in terms of being able to make it to the end but we're still not there behind him though Kyle Busch yes he is in the mix and they think they might be able to list make it listen on the radio uh, 200 feet Tony will get us a tenth which will get us to the end 200 feet early on lift will get us a tenth of a mile per gallon to get us to the end Okay. A moment ago, Kyle Busch was ready to pack it up and head to Road America. And you, you can tell the pep in his step. He's in the game. He knows there's some daylight ahead. They might be able to make it on fuel. Ben Bayshore said, I need a little bit more, and we'll get there. And you hear the information. It's detailed information. And so it's not guesswork like it used to be years ago. These guys really have an idea of just how much they need to do and change to save as much as they need to save. So the driver, they talk about this during the week. All right, this is what 60% is. This is, look at the throttle. This is what that feels like to you. So they're asking a driver and they know the driver knows how to perform the task. And I believe that some of these guys will make it work. And we've covered from Larson and Kyle Busch forward. Well, how about Kyle Busch back? Bubba Wallace, he's in the same situation in seventh. Ryan Priest in eighth. Briscoe ninth. Suarez 10th. Newman 11th. I mean, talk about put its playoff leaderboard upside down. One of those guys that are not realistically within striking distance on points, they could win this race. The 37 has been running without a charter. This is an open car. He wasn't even guaranteed to be in the Daytona 500, yet they have soldiered on all year. Can a fuel mileage run win this 37? Now, these two are like, no, you save a little. No, 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 you save a little. How fast can you go, Jeff? This is, this is some interesting cat and mouse right here. Well, just for reference, Brad Keselowski knows he's got a bit again. He's run, just ran a 53.86. Kurt Busch ran a full second slower than Brad Keselowski trying to save fuel. Like you said, Steve, this battle right here, these are the two guys that are like, if we save enough, we can make it, but how much do you save and keep that track position? So the 11 car can't push himself into running out of gas right here, right? He can only run his pace no matter what the car in front of him is doing. Let's listen to their radio. Back it up to another 100 feet from what you've been doing every straightaway. I like where we're at, but just keep giving me more. So, so on top of that, back it up, lift sooner, don't use as much gas, and behind that one car, he's getting a draft. So he does not have as much rolling resistance on his car. That's helping his fuel mileage some as well. So, you know, running out of gas is the worst case. The second worst case, Jeff, 
is finishing second and still having a gallon. Save too much and not push the guy like, oh, I could have went a little harder. And can you put yourself in Kurt Busch's shoes right here? Think how many points he's gained the last three weeks by being consistent, by getting good finishes. And now he could have a great finish or he could have a horrible finish and erase all those gains he's made. But Chip Ganassi, he likes winners. Time to deliver some trophies. Let's go NASCAR nonstop. Brad Keselowski, race leader, has a four-second lead over William Byron, but we know Brad has to come to pit road. Will not have enough fuel to make it all the way to the end. He came last to pit road on lap 87. Now, William Byron just behind him came at lap 94, but he's been on the gas a little bit further, Dave. And they were just told two laps ago now, William Byron was just told, Max, save, Max, save. We'll see what we get. He tried it for a lap. They said, nope, back off sooner. So, guys, I don't know. That was kind of late to let William know, okay, uh, let's go to the fuel save plan. I mean, I need to know. <laughs> I, as Dale, a driver, Dale looked at me. He's like, how much you expect him to save him? I mean, as a driver, if I'm going to have to save fuel, you got to tell me when I leave pit road, right? Sweet. I mean, because you got to find a lot of laps to do it. It's too late. It's too late in the race to start trying to save a couple laps now. Like you said, Steve, it's like the guy that's getting ready to retire just starting to save for his retirement. Yeah, yeah, you're going to start your 401k at like age 64. Man, it's a little late. you got to start that earlier in life. So we got four cars all running right here together. we got Kurt in that one car, Denny in the 11 car. And let's look at what they're doing with the throttle. How early they get out of the gas. Kurt back to three. So he's sitting there holding part throttle down the straightaway as he gets closer to the corner. So Denny Hamlin could run up there and pass Kurt Busch right now. Kyle Larson could pass Denny Hamlin right now. They're Kyle Busch could pass Kyle Larson right now, but none of them want to. They're just saving fuel. The minute they feel like they can make it the rest of the way, somebody's going to throttle up. 
and going to turn a faster lap time and try to position Kurt, himself to be the leader. Kurt at the flag stand starts to save. Then he just a little bit after him. Yeah, look at that partial throttle. Yeah. And they're doing this. They're literally running a second slower than Keselowski that's out there just going as hard as he can. And that's, I mean, I'm not that, that's, I, I expect them to be giving up much more time. One second's not a ton. I still believe the guy that's in the best position here is Kyle Busch, because Kyle Busch has a lot more fuel than the rest of them do, Marty. That's a great point, and they think they can now make it for Kyle Busch, although he's riding here. The meat in the sandwich is Kyle Larson. Here's a conversation on, on the radio a moment ago between Cliff Daniels and Larson. Once all of us get to the point where we think we can make it in the crew chief's turn, you guys lose the best car, you know, we'll win. We just got to get to that point. Keep saving for now. My and best guess is we are very similar to the one in the 11 right now. The one is probably getting the worst mileage show in the line here. There you go, Jeff. That's what you said. The crew chiefs would let them go. But, Steve, a terrific point by Cliff Daniels. The one, by towing this group along, is likely getting the worst fuel mileage of all of these cars. Yeah, I, absolutely. You know, he's breaking the air for the pack. The other three are kind of following along. So we keep talking about this because this isn't the first time. This is 2015 back in August. Joey Logano looks like he is going to win on a fuel mileage race. He runs out of gas. Lead goes to the 78. What happens to Truex? Out of gas. Closing laps, 18 to Kyle Busch, out of gas. Kenseth, from nowhere, wins this fuel mileage race. And that's why we continue to talk about these four, but we got to continue to look deeper in the field. Kurt Busch, Denny Hamlin, Larson, and Kyle, that's great. But if these four cat and mouse their way out of gas, could it be Bubba Wallace in the 23? Is he back there saving? He pitted, you know, about the same time the rest of these guys did. Priest behind him. Newman behind him, and now if everyone runs out of gas, it's Kevin Harvick's race. I mean, he only has 17 laps on fuel. He is not concerned at all. He's running as hard as he can, so anyone, Rick, can win this race if they can keep their car running for 11 more laps. Kevin Harvick right now 30 seconds behind Brad Keselowski. Again, we know Keselowski has to come to pit road. He definitely doesn't have enough fuel to make it to the end. Everyone else is on fuel-saving mode. Remember, today's 10 laps longer than yesterday. Right now, all these guys are like, man, why don't we run yesterday's race? I had enough for that distance. Tell to go. The other thing we can look at is Harvick. He is in 10th uh, place running 54 20s. He is uh, maybe about nine seconds or eight seconds behind Kurt Busch. Kurt's running almost a second slower. They just turned Kyle loose. They just told Kyle Busch, you can make it from here. Go. They did. They, did. they told him, go hard, get around the one. So let's see what we can do. Once you get around the one, then slow back down, save us some fuel. So they're playing that game that, hey, if we think these guys might think they can make it, we're just getting ahead of them to play the game and cover them ahead of, ahead of time. It's like leapfrog, Jeff, right? He has, a lap, he has a lap more fuel. He should, he should be able to go a lap sooner, assuming they all save the same. I think, though, that Harvick and Blaney, those guys are going to get close to catching these guys. If they don't change their pace, Harvick and those guys might get into the picture. But if the eight, if they, if they the 18 believes that they can go from here, they're going to pick their pace up. And so oh, the now, one. The, the, Look the, at the 11, one and the 11. The 11's gone. He said, all right, let's go. We can make it from here. we got to beat the 18. So did, when the 18 launched, did he push the 11 into doing something that they didn't really want to do? Did he just run the 11 out of gas? Only time will tell. Is now the 11 going to just go fast enough to stay in front of the Every one or the 18 if he tries to get by him? I don't know. I mean, the problem with this car is so much momentum. You just can't pick up your speed. You know, if somebody kind of attacks first, by the time you recover, the guy's gone by you. So Hamlin went that lap of 54, 57, Kurt Busch of 55. So Hamlin ran a half a second quicker than he had before. Kozlowski on pit road. Man, a splash of fuel for, for Brad. Let's listen into the 24 radio. This race. We are saving enough fuel to win this race. Max save. All we're doing is watching the guy out back. All right, there you hear it. They're saving enough. The question is, can they save that much and hold off Hamlin, who's basically, we assume, wide open at this point. So the question is, can the 24 stay in front of the 11, who's now in second? He has four and a half, 4.3. That's his lead with eight laps to go. And those numbers are going to continue to go down because he's going to try to save fuel just enough to get to the end of this race. 
You can see they launched the 11 in the 18. They still Three haven't the sent. behind us right now. They still haven't sent Larson. They still haven't sent Kirk. Look at the time. Hamlin down inside of four seconds. Chewing away at that lead. At some point, Byron's got to go. When your when your stomachs stop turning knots yeah, right now, thinking if you're going to get there. Mine started about three laps ago, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> Thinking of just a little bit, just a little bit. And listen, we talk about these guys for the win, but this same is all the way through the top 20, right? There so, are guys that are trying to have great runs by doing the same thing. So they see that that lead <laughs> getting chewed up, and they're like, picking up a little bit, William. We got to go. We got to go something now. And he might run himself out of gas doing that. These guys, these Yip guys, may have timed this perfectly to be able to go push that 24. He was just told to pick it up just a little bit. They saw that gap shrinking. Tab Boy, the spotter, keeping him a prize. Said pick it up just a little bit. Nothing crazy, but pick it up. So there you go. Look right there, William Byron, 160 miles per hour. Denny Hamlin, the same lap, 166 miles per hour. Byron was saving a ton. Wasn't enough. This is so nerve wracking. Oh. And you're in that car, and the only thing you can do is trust what you're hearing, right? They're providing that information. They've got data. They know how much fuel you've burned. But that's assuming they got it completely full. That's assuming all that stuff happened exactly the way it was supposed to happen. 2.2 seconds now. The gap between Byron and Hamlin. One thing worth mentioning, I've continued to say that Harvick was the best car safe on fuel. That's no longer the case. Kazlowski pitted, has rejoined the racetrack. He is now the farthest car up, absolutely safe on fuel in seventh. So with every one of the top six run out, it could be Brad Kozlowski's race. And that was a great stop. They came in, splash of fuel back out onto the racetrack, able to get back out in front of Kevin Harvick. But it's William Byron. Has he saved enough? Now two seconds separating Byron from Hamlin, under six laps to go at Pocono. And you think my telestrator works bad? You see my fuel mileage notes Look back out here. here. Yeah, the 18 starting to put the pressure on Denny. I think Kyle just has a better race car. I mean, at some point, if they both make it, right, now it's going to be who has the better car. Byron has the best car, obviously being able to hold that two-second lead now. We've seen that kind of pace out of him yesterday. You only have to win this race by a little bit. So William Byron can still give up two seconds over the next five laps, saving fuel, and still win this race. So here it is. Everybody was about four, three or four laps short. Now is when, if cars are going to start running out, it's in this window. We are finally here. The anticipation is going to end soon. Who's going to make it? So look at the speeds now. William Byron, 165. Denny Hamlin, 165 and a half. So William Byron picked it up a little bit. Doesn't even have to pick it up that much. Can still back up just a little bit. Again, one car leads enough to win the race. They were running 55 mid-second laps. Now it's 54 mid-second laps. They've picked it up at least a second a lap. And think about William Byron. I mean, you go all the way back to end of stage one. That, that pass of Truex is what changed his entire day. Get, kept him in this situation. Can he get fortunate enough? I'm going to call it lucky, but can he be fortunate enough that that few feet of racetrack falls his way again? And you see they, you know, Larson's past Kurt. They still haven't turned Kurt loose yet. He's back there waiting on his his opportunity to turn her go. He may be the guy that ends up winning this race because he was the one that saved and was smart. These other guys may have went too early. Sometimes, you know, pulling the reins back is the move of the race. One and a half that seconds. Was good. You pulled away. Maintain your save. You're fine. I love the conviction of that. <laughs> yep. Right? Like that was. Pressure. Oh, oh he said low fuel pressure. Well, they that's got it. Pit, pit, pit. Uh, they to go. Here. Called him pit road and he didn't get there. Already by the pit oh, entrance. Man. Now are we? A bit of confusion. Are we there. playing poker here and maybe calling thinking, something on the radio? I don't know why the Ooh. advantage would be in that. He still got the pace coming around turn one. The car still accelerating off onto the long pond straightaway. He's flipped the switch to the the backup, right, Steve? If he's he was told to do that, Rick. Yes. Okay. But Usually that only gives you what a lap. Run it out or do I have to come this time? There you go. Do you want me to run it out? You gotta come. You gotta come. Gotta come. Says, listen, 
that switch isn't going to get us three laps. So, so the reason the bottom of the screen matters is remember, safe, safe, safe. Guys, we know have enough fuel. Brad and Kevin. So Kevin doesn't know this. Chasing down Brad Kozlowski for what seems like six could be first here in two more laps. And remember, you guys called this. William Byron did start saving second. fuel early enough. But we think Hamlin and Kyle Busch may have started early enough. They crossed the start-finish line. Two laps to go. Kyle Busch, I keep saying it, had a lap more fuel. Hit it a lap later. Denny Hamlin. All right, so there's instruction that said if you come off from three and you're seeing the white flag, flip the switch now. We don't need to see you again. If you get all the way to there without seeing it, then I would assume you can finish at that point. Tony Hirschman, the spotter for Kyle Busch, said pressure the 11. We're better on two. Run him out of gas. Oh, he's I running know. out. Kyle Busch said it's have to flip the switch. Actually, Kyle Larson behind them said I have to flip the switch. Denny is sitting there part throttle down here in the turn three. Kyle Busch going to the outside. Come. Here now we Kyle, go. Kyle Busch needs to back it way up. 11's coming to pit road, so Kyle Busch now takes over the lead, taking the white flag. One, one more white flag. One lap to go, presented by Credit One Bank. Does he have two and a half miles of fuel? Jeff, you mentioned it. Pitted one lap later. Could that be the difference? We will see if he can finish this lap. Save it. Save it. He can, this lap can be really slow. Seven and a half seconds in front right now of Kyle Larson. Larson, slow. Chastain's out. Chastain, yep. Yeah. Up in the middle of turn one. Kurt Busch is on pit road. Kurt Busch ran out. Can Kyle Busch find the fuel for a half a lap at Pocono? Max saving. Max saving. Mid long pond. Now he's eight seconds in front of Larson and still under power. Kyle Busch, what a day he's had. Can he make it all the way? Max. Still out, still out. We got Unbelievable. it. Unbelievable. Oh, yeah. Kyle Busch is going to win at Pocono. Good work, fellas. Say what you want about fuel mileage races, but that was entertaining to me. That was exciting all the way to the end. Hey, you know what? Let's make our transmission break every week at the right time. Come in and fix it. Stable that fuel. It's all in the plan, man. There was another guy inside of his car at the pit stop working on linkage, and Kyle Busch is able to win this race at Pocono. And he has enough fuel to make it all the way around the racetrack and then come back in front of the grandstand. Takes. Problem, problem's going to be he's not going to be able to do a burnout in just fourth gear. Yeah, good point. I will say, though, you guys talk about the work that goes in, the amount of preparation for that style of race, not just the information on top of the pit box, but I can tell you over the radio, but we had better have discussed this before I just drop some knowledge on you over the radio. I mean, yeah, Ben Major, Kyle Busch, just, I mean, a, a wonderful job of being on the same page. Second win of the season for Kyle Busch. It is the issue with the transmission that opens them up to the opportunity to come down pit road after, and get, you know, top off the fuel and get that extra lap. I mean, without that, they're pitting with everyone else, and they're in the same boat as all these other guys are. Look at that. This checker flag moment brought to you by Advanced Auto Works. And this will be a performance deserving of a bow. Kyle Busch saved enough fuel to outduel Denny Hamlin at the end of the race. They had come one lap later to pit road. And again, the car stuck in fourth gear. Once he was up to speed, he started saving fuel and wins the race. It's the fifth time that Kyle Busch and Kyle Larson have finished 1-2. Busch has won all five of those. One, two finishes. Marty. Wow, I don't know where to start with this one. Kyle Busch winning at Pocono. 
Have you ever had a more bizarre win in your life? I mean, it was stuck in fourth gear for a hundred some laps, Kyle. Yeah, stuck in fourth gear. Um, about out of gas. <laughs> just saving, just riding, just, um, you know, playing the strategy the best we could with what was given to us. And um, just can't say enough about everybody on my team and everybody at Joe Gibbs Racing, Toyota, TRD, and all the work that they're putting in and everything. You know, sometimes these races don't aren't always won by the fastest car, but I still felt like we had the fastest car. Even though we were in the back and behind and having to come through and persevere through, um, you know, being stuck in fourth gear, no clutch, all that stuff, it's all burned out. So um, nothing left. And in this M&M's Minis Camry, it was awesome today. So um, thanks to Rowdy Energy, Interstate Batteries, Stanley, Ream, everybody that, uh, that works on this car. And uh, a lot of our M&M's fr friends are here today, so it's really cool to have them being here and being back at the track. And thanks to Rowdy Nation and all the Kyle Busch fans up there for supporting and pulling for us. This is really awesome to... Uh, pull off another win here at Pocono and um, feels good. At one point you were like, hey, should we just pack it up and head home today? But at what point did that switch for you and you go, wait, we have a shot to really pull this off? I, you don't, I don't know, you don't know, you know? It's just, um, the biggest thing was trying to time the restart right, you know, and um, you know, leave pit road and then come back around and be at full speed by the time the field takes the, the start finish line here. and. We were a little bit off on that. I think we were from here to the pit road off on that, but um, you know, it was uh, about all we could do. That was all you can think about doing in that situation, you know, and just trying to think through every opportunity and every obstacle that's on you. And um, you know, that's that's just what we did. So again, great job to my team. Thanks to Ben Bishore. Um Thanks to Matt, the fuel guy, for getting it full. <laughs> that's a big, important one here today. And uh, so it's really cool to take home another checker flag. What an incredible team effort, and what an effort by the driver. Kyle Busch brings it to victory lane in Pocono with a car that stayed in fourth gear for most of the race, Rick. And Marty, remember, he was singing in the car earlier, fly like an eagle. Well, you know what? The trophy is an eagle here at Pocono. Well, you guys talked about his upbeat attitude. We hadn't, I mean, honestly, seen that a lot out of Kyle Busch. When things go down, he's very competitive. He gets a little fired up, but that upbeat attitude all weekend long, and man, here he is. In victory lane. What a day, what a weekend here at Pocono. The fans have seen some incredible things happen here. Yesterday it was Larson that looked like he was going to run away with it. Cut a tire, didn't make it to the finish line. Alex Bowman won yesterday. And today it was fuel mileage. A broken linkage. Kyle Busch perseveres and he wins again at Pocono. Kyle Busch is your winner today. What a weekend coming up on NBCSN. It's NASCAR America post-race show, followed by IMSA Racing. That will be at 645 from Watkins Glen. Marty. Rick, we're still hanging out with Kyle Busch. Why? Well, it's stuck in fourth. There's no clutch in it. So Kyle asked me, hey, can you get me a push truck? So I think here it comes, Kyle. Here comes a push truck. Uh, well, I was going to call Bubba Wallace and see if he could door dash me a tow truck, but apparently uh, they're on their way. So good news, it's coming. So there you go. He gets a push to victory lane. How nice of these folks here at Pocono to help him out. <laughs> All right. So Kyle Busch still with smiles as the end of this one as we look at the playoff standings. Another win. So two wins for Kyle Busch. Kyle Larson with the most wins already at four. Still 11 different drivers that have won to lock themselves into the playoff standings. Good weekend for Kurt Busch. You look at that, though, only three above the cut line. Yeah, things are definitely heating up around the cut line. And to think we still have road courses and some unpredictability through the through the summer. But today, it's about Kyle Busch and that playoff point bucket up to 13 playoff points, sits in fourth, uh, just keeps hanging around the top of this leaderboard. And Kyle Larson coming home in second place. Dave caught up with him. Kyle Larson finishes second on the 94 lap hitters, and you saved enough to get here, Kyle. How'd you do it? Uh, I don't know. It's a surprising um, finish for us. I, our hindercars.com Chevy was um, really loose for the majority of the race, and then we got a lot of nose damage there on one of the restarts, and uh, was off on speed. I felt like after that, um, but Cliff and everybody did a really, really good job managing the race, and coached me through you know saving fuel there at the end and um, 
you was hoping that uh, the 18 was going to run out. I saw, the, I saw the 11 running out, and I was like, okay. I mean, they're teammates. They got to be. They got to be close uh, to running out. But I guess yeah, the 18 did pit, you know, lap after us under caution. So that 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 actually probably won them the race. So, um, but yeah, you know, second place finish. I thought you know we would be outside the top 20 a lot of the points throughout the race today. So we'll take it and um, yeah, just happy about happy about the effort for sure all weekend. With the damage on the car and, and kind of where you saw yourself with fuel, how much of a believer did did he make out of you? Did you think he could get here? Not until we actually started, you know, saving fuel. It seemed like every point of the race, like everything that happened in the race, nothing went my way. Uh, restarts, just guys messing up in front of me and me getting shuffled out of the groove, bad lane choices on my, my part, just everything didn't go my way. And then, you know, Cliff did a really good job, you know, keeping my head in it and uh, coached me through saving fuel. And, um, yeah, I mean, I had a lot of hope there at the end, you know, thinking that the 18 might run out. Thanks, Kyle. A near win yesterday, second place finish for him today. Well, for a minute there, it's certainly like it was going to be Denny Hamlin's day to go to victory lane, but just a little bit too short on fuel. Did you get, did you get sent to start pushing maybe a little bit too early there at the end of the race? What was the difference? Uh, just do what I'm told, you know, just don't, don't run when I'm not supposed to run and run when I'm supposed to run. The result is we've pitted on the last lap for three weeks in a row, so it's just uh, that's tough. I mean, I hate seeing the white and coming to pit road. And it's uh, just so frustrating. But you know, fuel mileage has got us the last two weeks and lug nuts the week before. But uh, you know, we're running fast. We're getting a little better. I, I think that overall we had some a uh, little bit more speed this weekend than what we've had in the um, past few weeks. But uh, yeah, we're just can't see the checker right now. Denny, you were the only one that ultimately had to pit there with a lap or two to go. Give us a sense for the people at home what that challenge is like. You're trying to maintain some track position, give yourself a chance, and, and you can't push it. Yeah, you're just, I mean, you're trying to win or you should, you know, you know, try to get the best finish that you can. Uh, but ultimately, you know, we just uh, didn't save enough. Uh, the 18, I think, uh, came in and got, you know, topped off because he had transmission issues, and that was essentially the race. So, um, yeah, it was just... Uh, it's part of it, you know, but proud of this whole FedEx camera team. We're just, uh, you know, not we're not getting any luck right now. And I hate luck in the in racing ten, terms because you make your own luck. But, you know, gosh, this is, is kind of crazy at this point. Well, perhaps the bright star, his race team, 2311, came away with their first top five finish of the season with Bubba Wallace. And sure enough, fifth place finish for Bubba Wallace. Oh, look at this. Kyle Busch and the car have made it to victory lane. So that push worked out for him as he will be celebrating there. All right, Steve, so, you know, one of these races where we saw yesterday Kyle Larson was the fastest car, looked like he was going to win the race. Now, Kyle Busch said, I think I had the fastest car, but I wasn't going the fastest on the racetrack. Well, listen, we've learned that there's a tremendous amount of ways to win and lose these races, and once again proved why I love this racetrack, and that is you have to be fast, you have to execute, you have to have a little bit of luck. Um, all of those have to come together. It makes it very difficult to predict these races, and yeah. we have seen some unpredictable finishes but somehow through all of that it was still Kyle and Kyle so if it was a normal race on speed those are the two I would have picked and then through all of that they still end up one two but I will say you heard Kelly just mentioned Bubba Wallace inside the top five for the first time since during the drive for 2311 racing Ryan Priest inside the top 10 so while there was a lot made of the guys up front who made it on fuel there were a lot of drivers inside the top 15 and top 20 who managed a very very good race to help their race team six race win streak snapped by Joe Gibbs Racing and the 18 of Kyle Busch. Hendrick had that uh, win streak going. All right, drivers, what do you think? We saw a pretty entertaining weekend of racing here at Pocono. Yeah, the atmosphere here at Pocono was amazing. A lot of fans, a lot of great racing as well. Looking at that playoff picture still, uh, it's very tight right there around uh, 15th and 16th place. Uh, the top five from Bubba Wallace, I think, really helps his cause to get back into that battle. Daniel Suarez, not an amazing finish, but the speed's in that car for those guys to continue to be part of the conversation. Yeah, hey, listen, I think Kyle Busch has to leave this racetrack, obviously winning the race, but feeling good about the speed they have. I think he's right. They had some luck today, but I think they had the best race car today, too. They are working themselves into being the team that can take the fight to Kyle Larson. I've said it before. They were lagging behind their teammates at, Kyle Busch, at, at Joe Gibbs Racing, but now they're the leader at Joe Gibbs Racing in speed. And that's an advancement for this team. There's an improvement for this team. I think Kyle Busch leaves here feeling really good about the weekend they had. And I think that's going to make them dangerous moving into these upcoming races. And coming up on NBCSN, it's NASCAR America post-race show. 
Kyle Busch, what a night, what a day. 59 career wins, ninth all time.